Welcome to the Fantasy Audiobook. Marvel. Start with Summoning the Shadow Troopers. Chapter 21. So acting alone makes Richard even more happy. As he headed towards the teaching building, Richard wandered around, his face was calm and there was no sign of urgency. Going to see the future opponent is not because Richard really wants to see the little spider, but it is just an excuse for him to leave the team. It doesn't matter if he can see it or not, so Richard is naturally not in a hurry. Soon, when Richard came to the teaching building, the students of Midtown High School suddenly found this little boy who looked like an angel. Therefore, along the way, people cast curious glances from time to time, but Richard turned a blind eye to these, or he was completely used to it. He didn't know who he was following with his appearance. Not only was his facial features delicate, but his skin was even whiter and tenderer than a girl's, and he had no resemblance to Jin. And a little boy, plus the word handsome, is enough to attract attention no matter where he goes. If it weren't for Richard's little face always written with the look of strangers, I'm afraid some girls would have come up to chat up. Now, it's not the kind of approach you imagined, but just pinching his little face and touching his golden and supple hair. I don't know if it was God's will, Richard, who was walking in front of the teaching building, soon saw a young man walking towards him. His name is Peter Parker, and he is also the famous Spider-Man. In his last life, Spider-Man was one of the few Marvel movies Richard had seen. Therefore, Richard still has some research on Peter Parker. He's not a born hero, just a young man with various flaws. The reason why he became a superhero is only because of the words of his uncle, and the accidental death of his uncle, which created the current superhero Spider-Man. But a person can persist in doing good things for a while, but it is difficult to persist for a lifetime. For example, Peter Parker was briefly blackened in Spider-Man 3. Although there is the influence of the symbiote, it can also be found that the darkness hidden in Peter Parker's heart. So at this moment, an idea suddenly appeared in Richard's heart, who said that the Dark Alliance must be the villain. A blackened little spider is actually quite cute, isn't it? Thinking of this, Richard's mouth couldn't help showing a smile. And Peter Parker, who was walking towards him, saw a little boy smiling at him, and subconsciously returned a smile, and finally the two passed by. Looking at Peter Parker who disappeared at the end of the corridor, Richard, who had a new idea, gave up the idea of contact before, turned and left the teaching building. In the library, I found Susan and his group, and Richard returned to the team. In the next trip, Richard stopped running around, and followed the team to complete the outing activities. In the end, he naturally went back to his own home. After Friday, Richard ushered in a two-day vacation. Richard, who was temporarily fine, began to plan a plan to blacken Spider-Man. It is said that it is a plan, but in fact there is no plan. As the saying goes, it is too easy to lure a person into depravity after three years of good study and three days of bad study. Besides, Richard doesn't need Peter Parker to degenerate, so he now just need to wait patiently for an opportunity. And just when Richard was perfecting his ideas, the Austrian group located in Manton, something was happening at the moment. Norman Osborn, the chairman of the Austrian group, specializes in producing weapons for the military. In order to expand the group, Norman Osborn has studied human enhancement agents without obtaining a military license. I want to use this to get more military orders and expand the scale of the group. However, after investing a huge amount of money, the human body strengthening agent has failed in vivo experiments, and the military naturally cannot accept a failed product. Therefore, Norman Osborn's plan was not only in vain, but was even accused by the military of privately developing human augmentation agents so that it closed the research. It caused Norman Osborn to be hit hard and even affected his right to speak within the group. Because once the research is closed, it means that the huge amount of money paid will be wasted and there is no possibility of recovery and such a huge loss has occurred. Naturally, someone needs to be responsible for it. As the person in charge of this matter and the developer of the human body strengthening agent, Norman Osborne naturally takes full responsibility for this. Therefore, the board of directors decided to remove his chairmanship and kick out the Austrian group. When he heard the news, Norman Osborne was going crazy, and in fact he was already crazy. So just today, he decided to do another in vivo experiment, and to do it himself. Otherwise, once tomorrow's board meeting is held, he will be kicked out of the Austrian group directly, and there will be no chance of a comeback. 
At the moment, there is only Norman Osborne in the laboratory. After making all preparations, Norman stripped naked and walked into the glass door. As he entered, the glass door closed instantly, and the gas formed by the human body enhancer also filled the sealed space and was continuously inhaled by Norman. Soon, the potion took effect, and the heart-piercing pain came to Norman's mind, and was transmitted to all parts of the body through nerves, causing him to let out a beast-like wailing. After a full hour of work, the glass door opened automatically, and Norman inside fell to the ground with a bang, as if he was dead. But soon, Norman's eyes opened again, and a sinister smile suddenly hung on the corner of his mouth. That night, a military base was raided and there was a big explosion. At noon the next day, on the Austrian group plaza, the Green Goblin, wearing green armor, wearing a demon mask, and stepping on a flying skateboard, made his debut. A pumpkin grenade directly killed all members of the Austrian group's shareholder meeting, causing huge chaos on the scene. For a time, people fled and screamed into the sky. The Green Devil, in such a powerful way, announced his birth. For this matter, Richard got the news on the same day. It wasn't that he paid much attention to it, but that the TV station that day was broadcasting it. There were even people doing activities in the square at that time, and the camera that was originally used to shoot the activities perfectly captured the video of the Green Goblin raiding the scene. Therefore, when this incident was broadcast, there was an uproar in the entire Star-Striped Federation. In this regard, Richard, who was watching TV, did not have any special reaction. Instead, it was the equipment on the Green Goblin that gave him some ideas. Created a batch of extraordinary with super serum, and then put on the Green Goblin equipment, can you help Jin and create an extraordinary army armed to the teeth? After thinking about it carefully, Richard temporarily put this idea in his heart, mainly because these things require a lot of money, and these are all contraband. Such a blatant creation, I am afraid that the Star-Striped Federation will not be able to sit still. When you are not strong enough to be invincible in the world, it is better to keep a low profile. Wretched development, hold steady. After temporarily dismissing his thoughts, he turned off the TV, and Richard went back to his room to rest. When the sun rose the next day, Richard ushered in Monday again. A day he hated, at the urging of Vanessa, he ate breakfast, went to school, entered the class, and came to his seat. Richard suddenly found a surprising thing. Monica, who used to be nagging in his ear, today it wasn't there. To be honest, Richard was usually annoyed by Vanessa's chatter, but today he was away, which made him feel empty again. But he didn't think about it too much. He slumped on the table and took a nap, until the bell rang for the class, and Monica was long overdue. Looking at Monica who walked into the classroom, Richard found that the familiar smile he used to have disappeared, his small eyes were red and red, and he looked like he had been crying for a long time, and he was no longer as cheerful as before. Watching this scene, Richard's brows were slightly wrinkled, and he couldn't help but feel a bit of anger in his heart. Looking at the sad and sad Monica, Richard forcibly suppressed the violence in his heart. Instead of asking what happened, he slowly leaned back on the back chair. When the bell rang for the next get out of class, Richard stood up straight from the back chair. Ignoring the many students around him, he walked out of the classroom. He wanted to figure out what happened to this little girl who was going to be his tablemate for the rest of his life. I have to say, when he saw Monica's red eyes, there was an inexplicable emotion in his heart. Since getting Jin Bing's order, Daniel has been following Richard's side, but has been in the dark. When Richard found Daniel in the playground, Daniel was like an old man with a newspaper in his hand. With the sound of footsteps, Richard slowly approached, and Daniel put down the newspaper in his hand immediately, just in time to see Richard walking towards him. Immediately, Daniel stood up quickly, bowed respectfully and said, Mr. Richard, do you have any orders? As soon as Daniel finished speaking, Richard's somewhat depressed voice also sounded, My roommate, Monica Aniston, go check what happened around her these past two days. Hearing this, Daniel nodded without any hesitation, and agreed, but at this moment, he seemed to have thought of something, quickly picked up the newspaper in his hand, glanced around, and then looked strangely the newspaper was handed to Richard. You might look at this first. After Daniel handed the newspaper to Richard, he walked aside and made a few quick calls. And Richard's eyes also fell on this newspaper at the moment, 
which reported in detail all the members of the Green Goblin who were killed in the attack on the Austrian group yesterday. Among them, Albert Aniston. Looking at the name, Richard closed the newspaper in his hand, and Daniel, who was calling on the side, came over at this moment. With a hint of caution on his face, he organized the words before saying, it has been confirmed, Albert Aniston, who is Monica Aniston's father. Albert held a certain percentage of shares in the Austrian group and was also a member of the board of directors, so he unfortunately died yesterday. While speaking, Daniel paid attention to Richard's face, but saw that Richard's expression was calm with his eyes closed, making it impossible to see what he was thinking at all. But Daniel was keenly aware that a depressing atmosphere was slowly filling the air. At the moment, Daniel stood there honestly, without saying a word. At this time, not speaking is the best choice. He doesn't want to get burned by saying the wrong thing. Soon, Richard opened his eyes again, and his tone was filled with a hint of coldness. Gochak, Chairman Austrian, the whereabouts of Norman Osborne. After speaking, Richard got up and left, walking towards the direction of the classroom. And Daniel also left the campus immediately after Richard gave the order to check the information Richard needed. He didn't ask Richard why he wanted to check the information. Daniel's smartest thing is to know what to ask and what not to ask. So he just needs to carry out Richard's orders. On the other side, Richard returned to the classroom again and looked at Monica lying on the desk. Tears flashed faintly in his big eyes, and a heavy feeling appeared in his heart. Human emotions are so strange sometimes. On weekdays, Richard finds Monica a little annoying, chirping like a little lark, calling incessantly. But when the smile on her face disappeared and the whole person became silent and no longer annoying, it made people feel a little distressed. The reason why Richard didn't ask what happened to Monica was because he didn't want to cause secondary harm to Monica. There is always a kind of nasty person in this world, no matter what happens to you, in the name of caring about you, to get to the bottom of it. In fact, he may simply want to know more about gossip, and the so-called concern is only on the surface. But they don't know that their inquiries to the bottom of the question are completely to sprinkle a pinch of salt on the wounds of the parties, so that the parties can recall the things that made them sad and sad, causing a second injury. Therefore, from the beginning to the end, Richard had no idea of asking, but just sat silently beside Monica to accompany her. Perhaps feeling Richard's attitude, Monica gave Richard a tearful look, and then tears rolled down her eyes like raindrops. Monica also threw herself into Richard's arms, her small body twitching slightly. Feeling the little lowly in his arms, a rare hesitation appeared on Richard's face, but in the end he raised his little hand, patted Monica's back lightly, and put her whole body into his arms. Many students in the class watched this scene, and all of them suddenly had gossip smiles on their little faces, and some people even planned to come up and ask. But before they could speak, a fierce force suddenly rose from Richard's body. Richard looked around the entire classroom with murderous eyes. Suddenly, all the children in the classroom, like frightened rabbits, sat on the spot honestly. Children's emotions are always very sensitive, they may not be able to distinguish what power is, but they can feel that Richard, a classmate who looked quite lazy in the past, looks terrible now. Worse than the teacher. Therefore, the originally noisy classroom was completely quiet, and there were noises from other classes outside the classroom from time to time. Only Richard's class seemed particularly quiet today. The teacher who came to class couldn't help but be stunned when he saw such a quiet classroom. And when he saw Monica sleeping in Richard's arms, he opened his mouth instantly and wanted to say something. But after meeting Richard's gaze, the teacher who taught the class suddenly fell silent. Earlier, Richard broke into the teacher's office with a pistol. Although it was not spread, almost all teachers knew about it. Later, the school principal held a special meeting for this purpose and issued a gag order, prohibiting everyone from speaking out about this matter. Therefore, almost all the teachers in the whole school knew that this well-behaved boy had a great background. Therefore, after meeting Richard's gaze, all the teachers in the class felt guilty for a while. They didn't even teach the class, and directly told the students to be quiet and let them study by themselves. Therefore, Richard's class was quiet for almost the whole day. For a time, it was rumored by some good people as a strange talk in the campus. At the gate of the campus, Richard sent away Monica, who had calmed down, and turned to get into the car driven by Daniel. 
The reason why Jinbei sent Daniel to Richard's side was to wait for Richard's dispatch. There is also the meaning of ensuring the safety of Richard in it. So now, when Richard goes to and from school, Daniel is in charge of picking him up. Daniel opened the car door for Richard. Richard sat in the back seat of the car, and Daniel got into the driver's seat. Then he picked up a file bag from the co-pilot and handed it to Richard. Richard took the file bag and looked at it, while Daniel started the car and introduced it. Norman Osborne, since yesterday's incident has become unstable, although he still appears in the Austrian group today, but I have not found his travel record. And when it came to off-duty time, he disappeared without a trace. In addition, I also noticed that during the time when Norman Osborne disappeared, the Green Goblin who caused the tragedy yesterday will become active. As of now, in the entire New York City, more than a hundred people have died because of the Green Goblin. Part of it was affected at the Austrian Square yesterday. But some of the rest were accidentally killed by our superhero Little Spider during the confrontation with the Green Goblin. When he said the last sentence, Daniel's tone revealed a sense of sarcasm, and the expression on his face became a little weird. Richard, on the other hand, ignored Daniel's emotional changes, read all the materials carefully, leaned back slightly, closed his eyes and pondered. The information Daniel has collected is very complete. All the information from the appearance of the Green Goblin until now is already here, and there are also two close-ups of the front of the Green Goblin. After thinking for a while, Richard suddenly opened his eyes and asked indifferently, what is the reaction of the Star Stripe Federation? If something like this happens, don't they have nothing to do? As soon as he finished speaking, a mocking smile appeared on Daniel's face, and his tone was a bit exaggerated, Mr. Richard, you don't understand the style of those officials, they only care about interests and they don't care about our lives at all. I asked people to inquire, and now they are busy meeting to study, whether the Green Goblin can be mass-produced, it is best to use it in the army. So I don't have time to pay attention to it for the time being. It can be seen that Daniel is full of disdain for the Federation of Stars and Stripes, and even has some hatred between his words. It's not surprising that Richard, although he doesn't know the story, is nothing more than a poor person who hates because of the government's inaction. There are too many people like this in the world. Although democracy and freedom are advocated nowadays, the freedom of the lower class is only the freedom that the upper class wants to see. In fact, the democracy and freedom of the Stars and Stripes Federation are just a joke from beginning to end. Knowing all the information he wanted to know, Richard directly told Daniel to drive home. This order made Daniel stunned for a moment, and he was ready to follow Richard to see the so-called Green Goblin. But now it seems that things are not quite what he imagined. Although he was a little puzzled, Daniel naturally would not disobey Richard's order. The car stopped at the door of the house smoothly, Richard got out of the car, waved at Daniel, and walked directly into the house. After saying hello to Vanessa, Richard returned to his room and stood by the window watching Daniel who was driving away. Richard's eyes gradually became deeper. About the Green Goblin, Richard had more ideas. At that time, the death toll revealed by Daniel in the car suddenly made Richard realize one thing, Blackening Spider-Man does not have to wait for a special opportunities, even if there are no opportunities, you can create opportunities yourself. Therefore, this time Richard not only intends to kill the Green Goblin, but also intends to completely guide Spider-Man to blacken. Naturally, Richard wouldn't tell Daniel all this, and he didn't want him to know, so he asked Daniel to send him home. Richard was an ordinary person in his last life, and he didn't know much about the so-called superior thinking, but Richard knew one thing very well, that is, never put all your cards on the surface. And don't let a person know you too well. This has nothing to do with whether a person is loyal to you, but the superior must maintain a certain mystery in order to better drive others. So for whatever reason, this time Richard intends to play by himself. Just after Richard made his decision, the system's icy electronics and sound suddenly sounded. Mission. The Darkening of Superheroes. The first stage. Kill the Green Goblin, replace the Green Goblin, and guide Spider-Man to blacken. Explanation. A guy with a dual personality will only hinder you from completing the task, so kill him first. Reward. One draw. Seeing the mission suddenly announced by the system, Richard raised his brows slightly. This mission was exactly what he wanted. After having dinner at home, 
accompanying Kim and watching TV with Vanessa, Richard returned to his room. Lying on the bed, Richard's eyes closed, and he instantly lost consciousness. At the same time, his soul broke away from the body and drilled directly out of the body. Glancing at the body lying quietly on the bed, Richard of the soul body rose directly into the sky, left the room, and rushed towards the bustling mountain. Controlling the two major legions of the Sombra Corps, Richard gained not only the control of the Sombra Corps, but the Sombra Corps was constantly feeding Richard back, constantly improving Richard's overall quality. Although there is no earth-shaking general change brought about by a sudden increase, it is better than a long stream of water, and it is very stable. Therefore, Richard is not only physically stronger than before, his thinking ability and logical ability have also reached a very good level. Through the original plot, combined with the information given by Daniel, Richard can easily infer where the Green Goblin and Spider-Man are now. Manton, somewhere upscale, this is where Harry Osborne lives. When Richard came here, he saw at a glance that the little spider, who had just fought the Green Goblin, was hanging outside the windowsill also saw Harry Osborne and Mary Jane in the room. Watching this triangular drama, Richard slowly showed a smile on the corner of his mouth and came directly to Little Spider's side. Spider-Man naturally couldn't see Richard's existence. But when a black shadow ninja emerged from his side, Spider-Man was instantly shocked. Without any hesitation, at the moment when the black shadow ninja appeared, a thread of spider silk shot out directly from his wrist and directly bombarded the body of the sombra ninja. Suddenly, the black shadow ninja turned into a black light and disappeared on the spot. After solving this black shadow ninja, before Spider-Man could breathe a sigh of relief, it was still the same place, the same posture, and another black shadow ninja appeared in front of him. Suddenly, the heart that Spider-Man had just put down was lifted up again. The spider silk spewed out from the wrist in an instant, and the second ninja turned into a black light again. And this time, almost at the moment when the figure of the second sombra shattered, the third sombra emerged from the same place again. It looks like the second ninja has been resurrected. Suddenly, the face under Spider-Man's mask instantly became extremely ugly. At the same time, his body also retreated slightly at this moment, watching the sombra ninja vigilantly, but he did not make another move. Who are you? Some suspicious voices came from Spider-Man's mouth, and Richard, who was floating aside, saw that the time had come, he floated forward and merged into Sombra Ninja's body. Controlling the body of the Sombra Ninja, a hoarse voice came out slowly. Can't you see it? I am you. As soon as these words came out, Spider-Man's suspicious and angry voice suddenly sounded. What? What are you kidding me? You think I'll believe your nonsense? Hearing this, Richard, who was controlling Sombra Ninja, immediately touched the corner of his mouth and revealed a smile. This kind of smile is displayed on the face of Sombra Ninja, full of evil meaning. If I'm not you, why am I here? If I'm not you, then why do I know your name is Peter Parker? Richard flickered word by word, and Peter Parker's body trembled with it. The face shrouded under the mask at this moment has been covered by an emotion called panic. Richard revealed his identity at once, which made him a little restless. You panic, you must have no idea where you got it, you are not me. With an angry roar, Peter Parker's voice suddenly alerted Harry Osborne and Mary Jane in the room. Who is outside, come out for me. Harry shouted loudly and stepped closer to the windowsill. After hearing Harry's voice, Peter Parker was completely panicked, and immediately jumped, jumping directly from the high building. The spider silk on the wrist continued to spit, and left the place rippling. Seeing this, Richard's soul body detached from Sombra Ninja's body, with a smile on his face, he quickly followed Peter Parker. As for the Shadow Ninja, it instantly merged into the wall and returned to the Shadow Kingdom. So when Harley came to the window sill, she didn't find anyone at all, she couldn't help but look back at Mary Jane and shrug. On the other side, Peter dashed all the way, passing through high-rise buildings, and finally appeared on a bench in Central Park. It was already midnight, so the entire Central Park was silent and no one was there. Standing on the bench, Peter looked around and shouted loudly, Come out! Aren't you me? Come out with the ability! In addition to being afraid of being discovered by Harry, the reason why Peter ran so fast was also to verify the truth of Richard's words. And Richard, who had been following him all the time, listened to his cry, and a hint of playfulness flashed in his eyes. 
A black shadow ninja rose directly from the ground in front of Peter, and Richard's hoarse voice also slowly sounded, Are you calling me? As soon as these words came out, Peter, who was still yelling just now, seemed to have been immobilized, and the whole person was stunned. If Peter completely scoffed at Richard's words before, now he suddenly believes a little. Otherwise, why did he appear as soon as he called him? Pulling off the hood, Peter panted and looked at the ninja who was possessed by Richard, with a hint of curiosity in his eyes in addition to puzzlement. Just when he was about to ask, Richard didn't give him a chance to speak, but chose to take the lead, I can't believe you or me. There is a lot of power in the air, but watching the person you love most fall into the arms of others, what a humble and pitiful creature. Richard said in a playful tone, coupled with the hoarse voice of the shadow ninja, Richard's words were like a sharp arrow, hitting Peter's heart directly. Peter, who had finally calmed down, became angry again when he heard this, shut up. As he said that, a spider silk popped out, and the shadow ninja that Richard was in once again turned into a black light. Richard naturally doesn't care about this. The Shadow Legion is immortal and endless. Even if Peter is killed for a hundred years, it will not be less than half. Therefore, another Black Shadow Ninja was immediately replaced. Yo, I'm so embarrassed, did I tell you the central thing? Look at you, you are a hero when you put on a mask, and a poor dog when you take it off. What are you insisting on? Richard continued to stir Peter's nerves, and at this moment Peter's face was completely occupied by anger. What do you know? Uncle said that the greater the ability, the greater the responsibility. If you don't understand, stop talking nonsense here. As soon as these words came out, the sombra ninja controlled by Richard suddenly let out a burst of sneer, and the laughter seemed unscrupulous, and it spread extremely far in the air. If I remember correctly, he should have died because of you. Do you think you're too embarrassed to say that? You are not the savior of the world, you can't save the world, you can't even save yourself, what can you do to save others, ha 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 ha. If what he said just now only made Peter angry, then these words now completely tore open the deepest wound in Peter's heart, making him completely stunned by anger. Shut up, ah, roaring, Peter's body jumped, and he punched the sombra who was possessed by Richard, and the sombra immediately burst open. Seeing this, Richard, who was floating in the same place, raised a strange smile on the corner of his mouth, and snapped his fingers lightly. Suddenly ten and one hundred ninjas appeared directly around Peter, and under Richard's control, he said at the same time, I said, I am you, and I represent the most real thoughts in your heart, you are now doing all this will not make you stronger, it will only make you look like a poor, irrational person. The hoarse voice kept echoing in the central park. Peter, who lost his mind, kept destroying the black shadow ninja, but under Richard's control, the number of black shadow ninja not only did not decrease, but increased. Let Peter vent for a while, and the entire Central Park is now in a mess. Seeing that not only did not decrease, but there were more and more ninjas, Peter finally stopped doing it, and instead sat on the ground, his face full of confusion. At this moment, he seemed to think of the moment of his uncle's death again, and pain and entanglement were constantly intertwined on his face. And the many black shadow ninjas surrounding Peter began to disappear at this moment, and in the end there was only one left. Controlling the remaining ninjas, Richard slowly came to Peter's side, patted his head, and said with a hint of bewitchment. There are many ways to be a hero, and you can even change your real life while being a hero. The greater the ability, the greater the responsibility. This sentence is not wrong, but when you take responsibility for strangers, you should first take the responsibility of taking care of your relatives. Aunt May is so old, do you still have the heart to watch her work hard for life? And Mary Jane, don't you want a better life? So you can't even save your own life, what's the point of what you're doing now? Follow the call of your heart, follow my guidance, and do everything you want. You, who have great power, shouldn't live so humble. Richard's words seemed to have some kind of magic power, and they kept pouring into Peter's ears. Peter's original red spider clothes, at this moment, whether it was an illusion or because of the dark night, there was a faint trace of darkness. Seeing this scene, Richard smiled reassuringly. He didn't need Peter to embrace the darkness so quickly and completely change his previous position, because that was simply not realistic. He just had to plant a dark seed in Peter's heart and wait for him to take root. And the current scene proves that the seed has been planted, and he just needs to wait quietly for his growth. 
But now, the heat is not enough, Richard must add another fire, so that this dark seed can be completely born. Looking at Peter who was still lost, Richard shook his head pretending to be disappointed and looked at Peter with pitiful eyes. You really are still useless. You said so much, but you didn't respond. If that's the case, then I'll tell you a piece of news for free. Do you know who the Green Goblin is? It's Harry Osborne's father. Outside the window just now, while we were talking, Norman Osborne was standing outside the door. So he already knows who you are, what do you think he will do? Poor Aunt May, God bless him. When the words fell, Peter suddenly raised his head. A pair of eyes quickly turned red, and the figure jumped suddenly and quickly disappeared in midair. The whole process didn't even have time to say hello to Richard, let alone whether what Richard said was true or not. Seeing Peter's disappearing figure, Richard got out of the Shadow Ninja with a smile that everything was expected. Now that his showtime is over, it's Spider-Man and the Green Goblin's turn. What he said just now was also true, and when he and Peter were talking outside the window, Norman Osborne was indeed standing at the door. For ordinary people, it is difficult to hear the movement inside the door clearly through a door, let alone the movement above the window sill at a height of tens of meters. But Norman, who was injected with human boosters, was different. Not only did he get physical enhancements, but his senses were also greatly developed. Therefore, it is not difficult to hear Richard's conversation with Peter. Even Richard was deliberately calling out Peter's identity at the time. As for how he discovered Norman, it was naturally because of the powerful soul power. Richard, who is free from the shackles of his body, has far more sensitive senses than usual. Even a super-powerful human-enhanced man like Norman cannot hide from Richard's induction. In a neighborhood that looks old, a car slowly stopped at the door of a house. Inside the door was an elderly woman, wearing reading glasses, sitting on needlework and other tasks. Just then the car door was opened, Norman carried a box of cakes, walked slowly towards the house, and rang the doorbell. Peter, are you back? May Parker's kind voice sounded, and at the same time, she was a little old, but her body was still strong, and she slowly stood up and walked towards the door. Soon, May came to the door, opened the door, and Norman's figure came into her eyes. Looking at this unfamiliar face, May's eyes slowly revealed a trace of doubt, and subconsciously raised her head and asked, Who are you? Seeing this, Norman also showed a smile on his face, looking graceful, like a gentleman. I'm Harry's father, Norman Osborne. He and Peter are good friends. Their young people have an appointment to play together today. I happen to be sitting there for a while. I heard that you were at home alone, so I came to visit. Listening to Norman's words, May's face suddenly showed a look of sudden realization. I heard Peter mention Harry, his best friend. I was supposed to visit you, but I didn't expect to trouble you to come over in person. Come in and sit. While talking, May greeted Norman to enter the door, looking very enthusiastic. At this moment, Norman raised his watch and looked at the time, with a hint of apology on his face. I'm really sorry, I came in a hurry, so I brought you a cake, or the group still has some business to deal with, so I won't stay any longer and will visit again next time. As he spoke, Norman handed over the cake in his hand. May looked at this scene and felt a little embarrassed, so she wanted to wave her hand to refuse. But Norman insisted again and again, and in the end May could only accept the cake and watch Norman leave. But she didn't see that the moment Norman turned around, the gentleman's smile disappeared, and a cruel smile appeared instead. With the brightness in his eyes, the whole person looks full of evil. Without stopping too much, Norman quickly got into the car and drove away from the place. And just before Norman left, Peter, who tried his best to get back, suddenly pushed the door and entered. May, who had just returned to the living room, heard the movement at the door, and immediately turned her head to look at Peter, who was panting at the door. A kind and gentle smile appeared on May's face. Peter, why are you running so fast? May's voice fell slowly, and Peter, who broke into the door, immediately set his eyes on May. Seeing that May was not surprised, Peter breathed a sigh of relief. But he still asked one more question uneasy, has anyone been to the house before? Hearing this, May Parker suddenly remembered Norman's visit just now, and immediately smiled, your good friend Harry's father came here just now, he is really a gentleman, not only took the initiative to visit, but also sent when the cake comes, put it in the living room. 
May Parker, speaking with a smile, complimented Norman. And the moment Peter heard this, his whole body suddenly seemed to have fallen into an ice cave, and his whole body was cold. At the same time, Peter's perception of danger is also beating rapidly in his mind at this moment, constantly reminding him, danger, run away. At the moment, Peter's face changed completely, and without saying a word, he directly hugged May Parker by the waist, and rushed out the door. And just as he set off, the cake placed on the table in the living room, at this moment, a timer inside has also reset to zero. Boom, the scorching flames exploded, completely detonating the liquid bomb, and sparks soared into the sky, engulfing the entire house. A strong wave of air slammed into Peter's body, causing Peter to fly straight out. However, thanks to his own strength, Peter quickly adjusted his balance in midair and finally landed safely. It's just that the house behind them has been completely swallowed by a group of flames. Looking at this scene, the expression on May Parker's face suddenly froze, and two lines of turbid tears slowly flowed out of his eyes. This house is not only her only place to live, but also her memories of the past few decades. But now, all is gone. The sound of the explosion spread all over the street, and for a while, the surrounding neighbors poked their heads out of the window, watching the raging fire rising into the sky, and many people exclaimed in surprise. Those with good deeds quickly took out their mobile phones to take pictures and shared them on the internet, while those with sympathy helped to call the fire alarm. But no one came down to check the situation and asked if I needed help. For a while, the fire was burning, illuminating everyone's cheeks, and also illuminating the world. In the air, Richard looked at this scene with his hands in his arms, with a calm expression on his face, without revealing the consciousness that Peter's identity brought him a crisis. In fact, even if Richard didn't count him, Peter himself would have been exposed, and even nearly killed May Parker. Although the house is destroyed now, of course at least no one is okay, thanks to Richard. So Richard naturally won't feel any guilt, not to mention that he is the underground prince of New York City, the son of the criminals in the mouth of those superheroes, and he is naturally in the hostile camp. Richard wasn't brainless enough to sympathize with his enemies. Don't see that Richard is trying to blacken Peter now, but as long as Peter doesn't become his own one day, Peter will be his own enemy one day. Therefore, whether Peter is dead or alive depends on his next choice, whether to embrace the darkness or struggle in the light. Not staying here any longer, leaving two ninjas to monitor Peter, Richard left this place directly and flew towards his home. As for the task of the Green Goblin, Richard was not in a hurry. He wanted to use the Green Goblin to break through Peter's bottom line of defense. Although the Green Goblin is a villain, he is also Peter's friend and Harry's father. Therefore, it is more appropriate for him to be the first step for Peter to break through the bottom line. The soul returned to the body, and although he drifted outside all night, Richard did not feel too tired. I recalled my actions tonight, summed up what I did inappropriately, and improved it next time. After finishing, Richard fell into a deep sleep. The next day, in the early morning, the sun was just right and the breeze was not dry. Richard, who came to the classroom, took the initiative to say hello to Monica. And Monica's mood today seems very calm, although her mood is still not high, but it is no longer as sad as yesterday. After all, no matter how precocious you are, you are still a child, and a child's emotions always come and go. At noon, Richard took the initiative to tell her a few jokes, and a smile appeared on her little face again. After this incident, Richard clearly felt that Monica was a little more reliant on him, and even had a soft spot for his embrace. After class, he burrowed into Richard's arms, like a kitten. And the most shameful thing is that Richard actually had such an impulse towards the little girl's film. After all, although the little girl has not yet grown, her delicate face is enough to kill the 9 by 9 woman in this world. Fortunately, at critical moments, Richard kept reminding himself in his heart. Three years to start, the highest death penalty, this did not cause any embarrassing situation. In this way, the feeling, between the two little brats can be said to be heating up rapidly, of course, mainly because Monica is rising. As for Richard's affection for Monica, it is only a little bit higher than before. The peaceful day passed like this, and when night fell, Richard slipped out of his body again. There is a big show to be staged tonight, Spider-Man PK Green Goblin live-action version, 
this is the news Richard got from Sombra, so as an important character, Richard will also appear. After all, this big play can be considered to be planned by him. Although it is just a push, it can be regarded as a participation. According to the relationship between himself and Sombra, Richard quickly found where Peter was. Because the house was burnt down, he and May Parker had to stay in a hotel temporarily. Although the home is insured, if you want to rebuild it, you don't know how long it will take. When Richard arrived, Peter was already in his gear. This time, he is no longer the guardian of the city, but an Avenger. He wants justice for himself and justice for May Parker, using his own strength. Before leaving, Peter paused slightly, then turned to look at the surrounding air and said, Aunt May, thank you. After speaking, the whole person jumped out from the window sill. And when Richard, who was next to him, heard this, he had to shake his head and sigh. This child is stupid and can't be saved. The speed is not slow at the moment, and quickly followed. Manton, a wealthy area, in an independent mansion, Norman was sitting on the sofa with a glass of red wine, tasting it carefully. With a decent suit and neatly groomed hair, Norman now looks like a gentleman, an aristocrat, but not a villain. Richard's intervention, although it did not change the general plot, did change some details after all. At least this time, Norman did not threaten Peter with Mary Jane. Peter's figure descended into the single-family villa, and with the spider's super perception, Peter quickly locked onto the figure in the living room. Through the outer garden, came to the living room. Norman shook the red wine glass lightly and looked at Peter Parker who appeared at the door, with an elegant smile on the corner of his mouth. Hi Peter, you're finally here. Hearing this, Peter stopped, looked around for a while, and finally landed on Norman. You knew I was coming. Hearing this, Norman shrugged, I don't know, but even if you don't come today, I will find a way to get you out. There can only be one God in a city, and that can only be me. Your existence violates my authority, so you must accept sanctions. But for the sake of you being Harry's friend, I'll give you a second choice. Join me and rule this city. Trust me, as long as we join forces, the entire New York City will become ours. Norman spoke in an arrogant tone, and the elegant smile on his face was now replaced by a frenzy. He seemed to see the scene of ruling the entire New York City in the future, and the smile on the corner of his mouth gradually became crazy. When Peter heard this, he immediately cursed, mad. And Richard, who was floating aside, rolled his eyes at this moment, and was a little speechless about the arrogance of the Green Goblin. In exchange for the original Norman, he would never say such mindless words. Anyone with a little knowledge knows how deep the water in New York is. Let alone one Green Goblin, even if there are ten more, don't even think about controlling New York City. But the Green Goblin, the second personality in Norman's body, obviously didn't think so. With a crazy smile on his face, his eyes full of cruel eyes, he stared at Peter closely. Have you thought about it? Do you want to join hands with me? Believe me, that feeling of dominating the lives of countless people will definitely make you happy. Hearing this, Peter refused without saying a word, you lunatic, your idea will never succeed, and today I will make you pay the price. The moment he spoke, Peter also moved at this moment. A powerful force burst out from his body in an instant, and the floor paved with marble burst open on the spot with Peter's explosion. Peter increased his speed to the extreme, flashing the flame of vengeance in his eyes, and rushed towards Norman. Looking at this scene, a cold light appeared in Norman's eyes, and suddenly a pumpkin bomb was thrown directly from his hand and met Peter. Seeing this scene, Peter, who launched the attack, had to change his route, and quickly dodged to the side. The next second, the pumpkin bomb exploded with a bang, and the entire villa was suddenly shocked. The terrifying shock wave rushed all around, the layout in the living room was completely destroyed, and there were terrifying cracks on the walls on all sides. At the same time, a large amount of dust filled the entire villa, obscuring the sight. The figure sprang out of the dust, and Peter came to the place where Norman stood just now, but at this moment Norman had disappeared, and even if Peter used his super perception, he could not perceive his existence. For a time, Peter looked around vigilantly, his muscles tense, ready to fight at any time. On the second floor of the villa, Richard had a premonition that the battle was about to start, so he left the battlefield and came here for the first time. 
It is condescending and you can have a panoramic view of everything below. It is definitely a good place to watch a play. He folded his hands on his chest and looked down at Peter, who became vigilant because of the loss of Norman. There was a smile on the corner of Richard's mouth, and he said softly, behind. As soon as the words fell, a loud noise suddenly came from behind Peter, which instantly confirmed Richard's words. Norman, who had already put on the green goblin armor, broke through the wall and punched Peter. It was accompanied by Norman's arrogant laughter. If you give up my kindness, then you can only die. Boom, Norman's punch hit Peter firmly. His fist strength weighs nine tons, which is definitely a terrifying value. As an ordinary person, under this punch, he would definitely be beaten into meat sauce in an instant. Even Peter, who had endured nine tons of force, was instantly traumatized. If it wasn't for his extremely quick reaction, the spider webs quickly ejected, and the distance between him and Norman was widened, then his end would definitely be extremely miserable. Looking at Norman vigilantly, Peter's figure was constantly beating in the villa. At this moment, he was like a wandering assassin, looking for an opportunity to launch a fatal blow. Likewise, his hands were not idle, and the spider silk spewed out one after another, roaring towards Norman, trying to restrain Norman's movements with the spider silk. But Norman's reaction speed was no worse than his, so the spider silks failed one after another, which suddenly made Peter's heart a little anxious. Richard, who was watching the battle, couldn't help shaking his head slightly when watching this scene. Peter's strength was good, but there was obviously room for growth. In particular, the experience of fighting with extraordinary people is seriously insufficient, and even his own mentality cannot be controlled, so more training is needed. He made comments silently in his heart, but Richard looked at it with relish. The live version of Spider-Man vs. Green Goblin is definitely more enjoyable than the so-called special effects. In particular, the physical quality of both sides has reached a level that ordinary people cannot achieve in their entire lives, so whether it is the reaction speed or the effect of the battle, people are excited to watch. At this moment, the entire independent villa has become a little shaky under the impact of the aftermath of the battle between the two. The roar of battle, also because of the continuous battle between the two, sounded in the night sky. If it weren't for Norman's villa being a detached villa, the battle between the two would have already attracted the attention of others. However, if the battle cannot be ended quickly, it is almost doomed to be noticed by others, because the movement of their fight is too great. The figures of the two were constantly colliding in the hall of the villa. If another ordinary person were here, their eyes would not be able to keep up with the speed of the two, and they could only see a green figure and a red figure. The terrifying aftermath when the two collided, caused more and more damage, and finally, with a screeching sound, the entire single-family villa collapsed. Boom, the villa collapsed, as if the sky collapsed, and a huge shock wave roared directly towards Peter and Norman. When they sensed this scene, the expressions of the two changed at the same time, and Peter's figure quickly rushed outside the villa. And the green goblin's feet also had a skateboard at this moment, and quickly rushed out of the villa. Boom, 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 in the last second, the two of them just left, and the next second the villa completely collapsed. The villa collapsed suddenly, causing a huge movement. Almost the entire wealthy area heard this thunderous roar. Immediately, many people went out to check, and happened to see the figure of the green goblin passing over their heads, and Spider-Man followed closely behind. Both Peter and Norman ignored the people watching the fun and fought directly in the air. Suddenly, the battle scene escalated instantly, and the surrounding buildings were also damaged in a large area. But all of this, Richard doesn't have time to pay attention to it at the moment, right now, he is busy hunting for treasure. Beneath the ruins of Norman's villa was a large private laboratory. Although the villa on the surface was damaged, the laboratory had a higher security level and was not affected. Therefore, when the villa collapsed, Richard did not rush out like Norman and Peter, but went directly to the ground. Right now, as Sol states, Richard and Peter are equivalent to two different dimensional spaces. No matter how much movement Peter and the others make, it will not affect Richard. And for obstacles such as walls, Richard can also pass directly, so without much effort, Richard entered the private laboratory belonging to Norman. Although it is a private laboratory, there are not many things in the laboratory, and various scientific materials are also placed. More importantly, Richard found what he wanted in the laboratory.
The formula of the human body enhancer, the design drawing of the flying skateboard, the research and development drawing of the green goblin armor. Needless to say, the effect of the human body enhancer, if the side effects can be eliminated, a large number of powerful superhumans can definitely be created. But in the same way, it is precisely because of the power of the human body enhancer that it is definitely not a simple matter to eliminate side effects. Richard is not too worried about this. The group of researchers who happened to be detained by him previously specialized in super research, serum. Human body enhancers and super serums both belong to strengthening the human body, and there must be something in common between the two, so just leave this matter to them. As for the green goblin armor, it is completely a high-tech armor. He does not have the powerful firepower of Iron Man, so he does not need to consume a lot of energy. Even an ordinary person can wear it, with good attack and defense. It is precisely because of this that the Green Goblin armor has the possibility of copying, and it can be regarded as the top individual soldier equipment in the world, and it is also a rare good thing. The last flying skateboard, of these three things, Richard's favorite is it. It can carry people to fly in the air, the speed reaches 500 km per hour, it can carry a weight of less than 1 ton, the front end can extend the blade, and it carries 12 rounds of miniature air-to-ground missiles, 5,000 rounds of miniature machine guns and ammunition, as well as lighting equipment and fire-breathing equipment. Even when necessary, the hidden self-destruction program of the skateboard can be activated to kill the enemy. Therefore, compared to the Green Goblin armor and the human body enhancer with side effects, the flying skateboard is more valuable and more perfect in Richard's view. Richard was very satisfied with this wave of gains. He summoned several ninjas to take away all these materials, including all kinds of scientific research materials in the laboratory. Richard did not mean to give up at all. Take away. Suddenly, the entire laboratory was completely looted by Richard. When he finally left, Richard controlled a black shadow ninja and activated a pumpkin bomb found in the laboratory. Suddenly accompanied by a huge explosion, the entire laboratory was completely turned into ruins. After doing all this, Richard followed Peter away. At this stage, it is time for the drama to end. The Buffalo Bridge, the longest bridge in New York City, is 4,360 feet long. But now this bridge has completely turned into a decisive battle between Peter and Norman. The two people who have been fighting one after another have already fought a real fire, and now they have reached the level of immortality. Therefore, when Richard came here, the battle between the two also reached the most intense time. A burst of fire burned on the Buffalo Bridge, and the bridge surface became even more potholes. Part of it was due to the aftermath of the two-man battle, but more was due to the Norman firing missiles. At this time, Norman's various means have basically been exhausted, so he can only choose to fight with Peter. The fight between the two of them made them look very embarrassed, and Peter's body was covered with scars. There were not only traces of smoke and fire, but also scenes. This shows how tragic the battle between the two is. Richard, who came here, didn't look at it again this time. When things got to this point, the value of Norman had basically been squeezed out, and Richard naturally didn't bother to waste any more time. The figure of the claw shadow appeared on the periphery of the battle between the two, and in the blink of an eye, Norman and Peter in the battle found that the two of them were surrounded by the shadow of the claw. The sharp claws on both hands flashed coldly in the moonlight, and the blood-red murderous eyes made the hearts of the two feel a little cool. The eyes of the two people staggered in midair, and the figures that were originally entangled, quickly separated, and looked around vigilantly. Looking at Claw Shadow's outfit that was not much different from that of the Black Shadow Ninja, a faint guess appeared in Peter's heart. Norman, on the other hand, looked at the four directions with a gloomy expression on his face, his expression was particularly gloomy, and he did not know what he was thinking. Richard doesn't have any thoughts of exploring this, and now he just wants to end this battle as soon as possible, because he has heard the sound of helicopters whistling from afar. Obviously, the battle between Peter and Norman still alarmed the Star-Spangled Federation. So in order to prevent things from getting more complicated, Richard decisively gave the order, kill. At the moment of getting the order, the Claw Shadow army moved. Hundreds of claw shadows rushed towards Norman, completely ignoring Peter beside him. Their speed is extremely fast, not much worse than even Peter. Therefore, 
the moment of effort came to Norman, and Norman, who was already prepared, could not be caught without his hands, and the terrifying power exploded, and he directly waved his fist to meet the claw shadow. A claw shadow burst into pieces before Norman's attack, but because of his sacrifice, he bought time for the other claw shadows. In just a split second, more than ten sharp claws landed directly on Norman. Originally, Norman didn't care about it, because he was still wearing the green devil armor, but when he saw with his own eyes, the sharp claws on claw shadow's hand cut through his armor like tofu, and Norman's face changed instantly. Danger, two big words rose directly in his mind. A sour voice sounded, and Norman's green goblin armor suddenly had several deep scars. The previous battles with Peter had cost him too much strength, and now he is besieged by hundreds of claw shadow troops, which has pushed him to a dead end step by step. The Sombra Legion has no fear, no fear of life and death, they only know to obey the command of Richard, the master. And the cooperation with each other is very close, the offensive is like a tide, and it is endless. Although claw shadows are constantly turning into black energy, to the claw shadow army, it is not a problem at all, and the injuries on Norman's body are also increasing at a speed visible to the naked eye. The whole process is like boiling a frog in warm water and cutting the meat with a dull knife. It seems that Norman's life is preserved, but in fact it drags him into the abyss of despair little by little. When the transformation became qualitative, the green goblin armor on Norman had been completely dyed blood red. Originally, he had the strength of a battle before, but now his body is shaking, a scene where he can collapse at any time. Peter on the side watched this scene, the muscles on his face kept twitching, and his eyes were full of shock. Having played against Norman, he knows how powerful Norman is, and he is no worse than him. But now, under the siege of this group of monsters, he gradually showed an unsupportive posture. If he and Norman were exchanged, what would happen to him? A question mark appeared in his mind, but soon he had the answer, and he would definitely die. Norman still has a green goblin armor, and the spider clothes on him will not give him any defense. The claws of the claw shadow core can easily pierce even the green goblin armor, not to mention the flesh and blood. Even if he was placed in the situation under Norman's eyes, Peter wondered if he could survive three minutes. With shock in his mind, Norman fell completely under Peter's gaze. At this moment, he was covered with wounds all over his body, and every wound was deeply visible to the bone, and blood was constantly flowing out of his body, almost emptying all the blood in his body. Richard, who was floating in the air, looked at this scene and nodded with satisfaction. With a thought in his mind, the Claw Shadow Legion, which was attacking like a tide, stopped instantly. At the same time, Richard's soul was also attached to a Claw Shadow, he turned to look at Peter who was standing still, and said hoarsely, it's time for revenge, go and kill him. As soon as these words came out, Peter was awakened instantly, looking at the shadow of the claw possessed by Richard, Peter's footsteps subconsciously took a step back. Compared with the image of the shadow ninja, the image of the claw shadow is closer to the devil, coupled with Richard's hoarse voice at the moment, like the bewitchment of the devil, people can't help but raise a fear in their hearts. No, I can't do that. I should hand him over to the Star-Spangled Federation. Peter subconsciously refused. Hearing this, Richard's claw shadow was possessed, and a terrifying smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. This is your choice, I won't force you, but I want to remind you that he is the chairman of the Austrian group. If you don't kill him now and send him to the Star-Stripe Federation, then I can guarantee that he can absolutely be safe. Come out without incident. Listening to Richard's words, Peter opened his mouth in surprise, and his tone was full of hesitation, how is this possible? He killed so many people and will definitely be sentenced to life imprisonment, and I can provide enough evidence. As soon as these words came out, Richard seemed to have heard something extremely funny, and his hoarse laughter suddenly echoed under the night sky. Although I thought you were stupid before, I also thought you could be saved, but I didn't expect you to be so stupid, stupid and naive. Have you ever seen a rule maker use a rule to bind himself? Not to mention that piece of law. The law is for the poor, not the rich. But the choice is yours, I won't force you, but I want to remind you last, if you want to watch Aunt May die in front of you, you can hand him over to the Stars and Stripes Federation. After Richard waved his hand, the Claw Shadow Corps suddenly gave way. Seeing this scene, Peter was stunned, and his mind recalled the scene of his uncle's death. 
At that time, because of a whim, he let the robbers run away, and his uncle died in the shooting. And now, the same choice was placed in front of him again. If he let Norman go, would his only relative, Aunt May, also die because of it? Thinking of this, the fire that devoured the house suddenly burned in his mind. An uncontrollable killing intent rose up slowly from the bottom of his heart. Feeling the change of breath on Peter's body, Richard's mouth suddenly showed a strange smile. No matter what, there are only zero and infinite times. As long as you break through the limit of zero, it means that you have broken through your bottom line of defense. So Richard won't force Peter, he'll just let him make his own choices. Suddenly, Peter's footsteps moved, and he walked towards Norman step by step. And Norman, who was lying on the ground, struggled to sit up at the moment, took off the mask on his face, with a trace of panic in his eyes, but a tender expression on his face. I know that all this is what I deserve, I only hope you don't tell Harry, okay. As soon as these words came out, Peter's footsteps stopped, and the whole person instantly fell into hesitation and struggle. Richard, on the other hand, was like a bystander, watching this scene quietly with his hands in his arms, without any intention of interfering. Anyway, Norman is going to die today no matter what, the difference is whether it will die at the hands of Richard or at the hands of Peter. If Peter kills him, it proves that Peter is a buildable, and if Peter gives up, it proves that he is indeed a hero. But the fate of heroes has always been tragic, and Richard didn't need heroes, so he glanced at the claw shadows around him, and Richard quietly acted as a melon eater. To kill or not to kill, Peter never felt that his mind was so messed up. Rationally, Norman should be killed, but morally, Norman was his friend Harry's father, and he was also his elder, which made him unable to do anything. But whenever he wanted to give up, he couldn't help but imagine the scene of the house burning with fire. At that time, he was going to go home a little later, and he was about to lose his last relative. In addition, he had never revealed Ben Parker's death in his heart, so Peter's footsteps that had stopped moving again. Under Norman's increasingly flustered expression, he came to him, tore off the mask, and looked at him with cold eyes. Seeing this, Norman smelled the breath of death, opened his mouth immediately, and wanted to say a few words for himself. But Peter had already raised his fist and punched Norman's head, bringing a strong wind. Boom, a sound like a watermelon bursting sounded, and Richard, who was watching the whole process, showed a knowing smile. Welcome to Embrace the Darkness. On Wednesday, it was sunny, the air in New York City was still fresh, and the sun was very bright. But at this moment, Fury and Shield is full of dark clouds. Even the momentum exuding from him became very depressed, which in turn affected the entire S.H.I.E.L.D., making everyone become cautious. S.H.I.E.L.D. has been in charge of all kinds of events related to the superhuman. And in the past two days, the Green Goblin who caused a great uproar in the entire New York City is naturally also in their attention. But since no decision has been made above, S.H.I.E.L.D. has not responded in addition to gathering intelligence. After finally waiting for the above order, the arrest was ordered, and they were also ready to start action, but before the action started, there was news that the Green Goblin was dead. The sudden change not only disrupted Fury's arrangements and plans, but also caused him to be severely reprimanded by the above. Although S.H.I.E.L.D. is nominally affiliated with the United Nations, in fact the boss is the Federation of Stars and Stripes. Now that the task explained by the boss has been smashed, the S.H.I.E.L.D. as a younger brother can only hold his nose and let the boss vent his anger. Not only that, because of the battle between the Green Goblin and Spider-Man last night, dozens of people in New York City were affected and died. In addition to the previous ones, the death toll has reached a huge 200. Therefore, although the Green Goblin is dead, it still needs a person to take the blame, otherwise the Star-Striped Federation will not be able to use a dead person to explain to the people. Even if the Stars and Stripes Federation has that face, some people will believe it. After all, a dead person, you can say what identity he is, anyway, he can't stand up and refute you. So, after thinking about it, another order was issued from above to capture Spider-Man and use him to cross the line. After all, strictly speaking, among these dead people, Spider-Man also has a responsibility, so this order has been agreed by most people. In fact, since the birth of Spider-Man, the New York City Police Department has issued an arrest warrant. 
Although Spider-Man helped them arrest many criminals, it also damaged a lot of finances, and the extraordinary power displayed by Spider-Man made people feel uneasy, so this arrest warrant exists. But as Spider-Man captures more and more criminals, he has completely become a representative of justice. So that arrest warrant is no longer taken seriously. The Stars and Stripes government has almost acquiesced in the existence of Spider-Man, so the arrest of Spider-Man has long been forgotten. Therefore, when S.H.I.E.L.D. conveyed this order to all police stations in New York City, it immediately caused a heated discussion. And the outside world was talking about it, and everyone inside S.H.I.E.L.D. began to find out the true identity of Spider-Man. They mobilized all the surveillance videos of Spider-Man in the past, and browsed through many archives, trying to find the true identity of Spider-Man from it. But unfortunately, after a lot of hard work, they got nothing. When he heard the news, Fury's face darkened a bit, but since he was black, he couldn't see much change. Continue to look for me, and the video from last night has been picked up. Hearing this, the reporter immediately replied, Agent James has already gone to pick it up, and it is estimated that he will be back soon. Yeah. Fury nodded slightly and waved his hand to signal the reporter to step back. They now have all the information about Spider-Man, which they have collected in the past. There is such a superhero in New York City, and S.H.I.E.L.D. needs to pay attention to it, so it is normal to find no valid information. After all, this is not the first time they have investigated Spider-Man's true identity, so if there is any valid information, it would have been found out long ago. Right now, if you want to find out the true identity of Spider-Man, you can only put your hope on the latest information. Another half an hour passed, and soon there was a knock on the door of Fury's office, and a middle-aged white man walked in. He is Agent James, one of the few Level 7 agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. As the ceiling of ordinary agents, Level 7 agents are extremely rare in the entire S.H.I.E.L.D., so every Level 7 agent can be said to be an elite among the elite. Without wasting time, Nodding at Fury, James went directly to Fury's computer and plugged in the USB drive where he copied the information. Soon, a monitoring screen appeared on the computer screen. There was not only the monitoring of the decisive battle site of the Buffalo Bridge, but also the monitoring of the Norman Villa. So at the beginning of the picture, Nick and James saw Norman drinking red wine on the sofa like an elegant gentleman. Immediately, very soon, I saw Spider-Man walking in again. The two obviously talked about something on the spot, and finally started. But what was monitored was only the picture, no sound. In addition, the monitor was placed in a remote location. They could see people clearly, but they could not see the faces of the two people. Therefore, even if they wanted to read the information through lip language, they would impossible. But what happened in the surveillance still gave them an idea and direction, that is, Spider-Man and Norman met. Thinking of this, the thoughts in the two people's minds suddenly became clear, and they continued to look back. This surveillance copy is obviously a combination of several surveillance cameras, so the picture appears to be very jumpy. Most of the middle part is battle information. Although the battle scene is very intense, it has no intelligence value. Therefore, the surveillance video was quickly broadcast to the final battle site, the Buffalo Bridge. The surveillance video here is the most ambiguous of all surveillance cameras. Due to the distance, they can only see vague shadows. Coupled with their inhuman strength, they can be sure that it is Spider-Man and the Green Goblin. At the beginning everything was normal, Spider-Man and the Green Goblin fought vigorously, but when the battle reached the fiercest, the claw shadow core appeared, and Fury's face changed instantly. Stop! With a shout, James subconsciously stopped the monitoring screen and Fury immediately pointed to the claw shadow troops that just appeared, zoom in, zoom in on this picture. Listening to this, looking at Fury's serious look, James didn't say a word, and quickly enlarged the picture of the claw shadow. The bigger the image, the blurrier the picture, and in the end there is only a rough color and outline. Looking at this completely unfamiliar figure, Fury's brows gradually wrinkled. This is the first time that Fury has seen the Claw Shadow Core, but he has seen the Black Shadow Ninja before. Although the images of the two are completely different, the blood-red light in their eyes is the same. Even if it's just an image, and it's still a blurry image, Fury can faintly perceive the tyranny and killing intent under these blood-red eyes. So these people are Jinbian people. Why did Kim and Spider-Man connect? Could it be that there is a deal between them? For a moment, 
various doubts and a series of conspiracy theories were directly connected in Fury's mind. After brainstorming for a while, Fury kept this matter in his heart for a while, turned to look at James, and said, go check, check all the relationships and social relationships of Norman Osborne, Spider-Man must be someone he knows, otherwise he would not be able to show his true face. In addition, Norman Osborne has a son, and find a few people to watch him. The people in front sent back news that they didn't find the human medicine formula, nor the green goblin armor, and the skateboard under his feet. The private laboratory at his home was also destroyed, and it is unclear whether it was self-destruction or what. So Harry Osborne has to keep an eye on me, and if anyone has the best chance of finding those things, it's him. Fury ordered in an orderly manner, James nodded, turned around and left the office in response. And when only Fury was left in the entire office, the calm look on Fury's face instantly dissipated, replaced by a touch of complexity. The moment he saw the claw shadow core, he had already identified Jin and intervened in this matter, so the things he said just now were not necessarily hidden by Norman, but may have been taken away by Jin. First, the super serum, then the human body enhancer, and the top individual soldier equipment. Jin Bing frequently makes these big moves, what exactly is he trying to do? And his contact with Spider-Man? Did he come into contact with other transcendents elsewhere? With such a powerful force in his hands, does he still want to overthrow the Star-Striped Federation by virtue of the extraordinary? The more he thought about it, the more deeply Fury himself was shocked by his own thoughts. I have to say that although smart people are smart, sometimes they think too much. Jin Bing, who was maliciously speculated by him, didn't know at this moment that he had been detained as an extremist. Similarly, Fury has never doubted that it may not be Jin Bing who did all this, but someone else. As for the real initiator of this matter, Richard, is now eating breakfast honestly, watching the morning news, and preparing to leave for class. Richard watches the morning news to see how much of an impact last night's events have had. Soon Richard had the information he needed on the morning news. A wanted notice is now issued, Spider-Man, unknown age, identity unknown, has extraordinary abilities, has extremely powerful power, due to his reckless use of power, causing the death of innocent citizens, so now issued a wanted, looking for those who know, quickly and contact the police. Seeing this reasonable but unexpected wanted order, Richard's mouth suddenly moved into a smile. As the so-called Sheng Min, fight M.I. Cho, it is okay to help a person, but too much help is cultivating an enemy family for oneself. And the image that Peter Parker has created for himself in the past is too brilliant, so when the black spot appears, it will cause verbal criticism especially the families of the victims, who have suffered the loss of their loved ones, naturally have resentment in their hearts. Generally speaking, the best people to hate are the Green Goblin and the Stars and Stripes. But now the Green Goblin is dead, and the Stars and Stripes Federation has immediately transferred the public's resentment to Spider-Man by publishing the wanted notice. They regarded Spider-Man as the protector, but accidentally killed his own relatives. Once this view was formed, how grateful they were to Spider-Man in the past, how resentful they are now. Human beings are blind obedient creatures. When they see what most people say, they will involuntarily join their ranks and enjoy the thrill of criticism. At that time, the Spider-Man, whom Quan Chung loved, became a villain who was spurned by everyone. Thinking of this, Richard felt so distressed for Peter, provided you ignore the playful smile on his face, of course. This matter was not planned by Richard. He is not so capable yet to influence people's hearts. Blame it, Peter Parker's image is too positive to allow for a blemish, which is why this situation is formed. Of course, Richard didn't do anything either. Things like fishing reels always needed guidance, and without guidance, there would be no climate. Therefore, after leaving the house, Richard directly instructed Daniel about this matter, and took Daniel's mobile phone at the same time. Time passed slowly, and when it was noon, Richard ignored Monica, who had completely recovered from chattering beside him. Opened the phone and boarded the major forums. Looking at the content of the forum, Richard smiled knowingly. He said that the arranged fishing reel guidance had already begun to take effect. At present, all major forums on the internet are discussing this matter, and even many radical people directly refute Spider-Man for nothing. The entire forum is full of hostility at the moment.
The second step of blackening is that a person who has not been betrayed by society will not become a qualified villain. The growth environment of each person determines his character and Xin Sheng. Unless he encounters a major blow, it is difficult to form a fundamental change. Killing the Green Goblin is just the first step, allowing Peter to break through his own bottom line, and then the second step, which is betrayed by the entire society, is the key to Peter's growth. In this case if Peter can persevere, there is nothing to say, Richard will immediately abandon the plan. After all, after being criticized by everyone, he can still have a bright heart. Such a person must have a strong Xinxing to a certain extent, and it cannot be easily shaken. Naturally, Richard didn't have to waste his time. But he didn't think Peter would have such a strong character. After all, after shedding the identity of Spider-Man, Peter was just an ordinary high school student. And a person's emotions are very sensitive at this age, and he is very attentive to the words of the world. Therefore, Richard is 99% sure about Peter's blackening, and the rest is left as an accident. Because nothing can be 100% successful. Turning off the phone and looking at Monica, who was clinging beside him, Richard reached out and squeezed his little face and said seriously, you should lose weight, look at the flesh on your face, it's about to change. It's a hamburger. As soon as these words came out, Monica, who was originally smiling, suddenly looked stiff, and the next second, she rushed towards Richard, ah. Richard, you are talking nonsense, I'm not fat, you are a big fat man. As he said, the pink fist fell on Richard's chest. With Richard's physical fitness at the moment, it was naturally not something that little girl Monica could shake. So in the end, Monica's fists turned red, and Richard was fine. And while Richard was fighting, in a hotel apartment room somewhere, Peter Parker was browsing online forums, his expression full of frustration, anger, disbelief. I always thought that Spider-Man was not a good person, and now he finally revealed his true colors. What, Shet, he's a bunch of shit. It's a shame that I worshipped him so much before, it's just that I'm blind. He should be punished by the law. Just like the remarks here, a large number of internet platforms of the Federation of Stars and Stripes are flooded, and some well-known blogs on the internet have also begun to accuse Spider-Man from the commanding heights of morality. Overnight, Spider-Man instantly went from a superhero everyone admired to a supervillain everyone shouted at. Even as time fermented, this turmoil sweeping the internet not only did not stop, but became more and more intense. Even when someone became famous overnight by bashing Spider-Man, everyone on the internet went crazy. They swarmed up like sharks that smelled fishy, and everyone wanted to tear a piece of flesh off Spider-Man's body. Even on major video sites, some people made a spoof video of Spider-Man's previous rescue videos, and added various insulting words, which became popular overnight. In the end, the fire burned completely and could not be extinguished. Even the instigator of the Star-Striped Federation never thought that things would eventually evolve into this point. Spider-Man's personality has collapsed, and now it has completely become a piece of meat on everyone's lips, and it has also become a cash cow for big capital to extract benefits. If Spider-Man had many supporters at the beginning and could stand up to the opponents, but when the opponents became more and more powerful, the original supporters of Spider-Man were shaken instantly. Some of them ignored this matter, and some simply jumped into the opponent's camp and began to shout. For three days in a row, Peter Parker didn't go anywhere, just stayed on the bed with his computer, swiping comment after comment. At this moment, the three words Spider-Man have occupied the front page headlines of all print media and web media. So no matter which platform Peter goes to, he can see the comments of those people. In this regard, Peter has been completely numb, looking at those harsh comments, and no longer has any feeling. But when he turned to Mary Jane's blog, the first thing he saw was a paragraph that was put at the top by Mary Jane. He saved me. I always thought he was a good man and a hero, but now it seems I was wrong. He is a liar, a liar who is good at disguise. Looking at this passage, Peter's mouth was slightly bitter, and his already numb expression suddenly showed a strange smile, like crying but not crying, like smiling but not laughing. Everyone's endurance has a limit, and Peter has reached such a limit. As for Mary Jane's words, it became the last straw that broke the camel's back. Completely knocked Peter down into the abyss. No matter how popular things are, under the great power of time, they will eventually be wiped out. 
A week later, although the internet is still full of the residual heat of Spider-Man, it is not as boiling as it was at the beginning. Richard did not say anything about this, nor did he take the initiative to contact Peter. Although the heat from the outside world has dissipated, Peter's inner torment has just begun, so Richard naturally won't bother at this moment. Likewise, he does not allow others to disturb them now. Because it would surprise his plans, and he hates surprises the most. On the way home from school, Richard sat in the car and quietly listened to Daniel's report. He didn't see Peter now, but that didn't mean he didn't pay attention to Peter's situation. In order to know in real time, Richard had specially asked Daniel to find someone to monitor Peter a few days ago, and it was strictly forbidden for anyone to disturb him. The reason why Sombra Ninja is not used is because the Sombra core is a little less flexible after all, so Richard can only let Daniel do it. And now Daniel is reporting on the situation these days. Mr. Richard, the person you asked me to monitor has stayed in the room for a while and didn't go out. But I found that S.H.I.E.L.D. seems to be looking for his whereabouts recently. My people saw the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. yesterday, and they are currently watching, but people from S.H.I.E.L.D. may start at any time, what should I do now? Daniel asked, and Richard closed his eyes in deep thought. From the moment he saw the wanted notice, Richard had known that the Stars and Stripes Federation would not let it go easily. Therefore, it is not surprising for the emergence of S.H.I.E.L.D. As for why Daniel's subordinates know the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Chapter 31 The whole New York City is so big, once it is limited to a certain circle, it is not a problem to know each other at all, not to mention that as the largest underground force, they also deal with the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so naturally it is impossible not to know. Tell them to keep staring, if S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't do anything then leave it alone, and if they want to do anything, stop them. Find someone to go over as a civilian, gather a few more people, and if they start to arrest people, let them arrest them. Richard commanded indifferently, while Daniel nodded seriously. After the vehicle arrived at the house, Daniel opened the car door for Richard, and Richard got out of the car and went home. The home is still full of warmth. Jin Jing sat on the sofa and read the newspaper. His burly body made him look like a bear sitting on the sofa. And the weight suddenly broke. As for Vanessa, she was busy in the kitchen, and the smell of the food came from the kitchen, causing Richard to swallow silently. He has long been fed up with the dishes of the Federation of Stars and Stripes. One day is either beef for bread, and occasionally a salad. Although nutritionally balanced, the taste is indeed monotonous and boring. So Richard asked to eat Chinese food. The next day Vanessa began to learn how to cook Chinese food, and she did it well. So far, although the craftsmanship is not very high, it has reached the degree of family stir-fry. This made Richard, who had eaten Chinese food again, have one word in his heart, fragrant. After eating, Richard and Kim greeted Vanessa and went back to their room first. The Green Goblin quest should be considered complete by now. After putting down his bag, Richard called out the system panel. Character Attributes Panel Name Richard Fisk Age 9 years old Status Son of Wilson Fisker Skills Ninja Core Claw Core Sheep Charm Snake Charm Items None. Draw. Once, Richard's eyes lit up slightly, and he instructed the system, lottery draw. Ding. Congratulations to the host, you have obtained the dragon charm. Dragon talisman, among the twelve talismans, the natal talisman of the holy master, its ability is to control the power of flames and lava. A dragon blast is enough to make air in seconds. Of course, this is an exaggerated statement, but this shows the powerful power contained in the dragon charm. It can be said that Richard, who owns the dragon charm, has completely got rid of his identity as a scumbag. Although he has not experienced actual combat, he still does not know how much the dragon charm can improve his strength, but it must not be weak. Therefore, with the addition of the dragon talisman, Richard's courage has also become more courageous. In the past, he was a little afraid of the shield. Therefore, Richard was uncharacteristically against shield before, because he already had enough power. Before, although he mastered the Sombra Ninja and the Claw Shadow Core, his own abilities were somewhat weak after all. Now that the Dragon Talisman has made up for this shortcoming, I dare not say what will happen in the future, but at least for now, Richard is not afraid of anyone. Of course, if it is the existence of the Ancient One or Odin, then the above sentence is not said. 
Self-knowledge has always been Richard's strength. Unless he collects all the twelve spells, Richard will be sure to fight that kind of existence. As for now, he should not be too high profile. Putting away the system panel, Richard smelled the aroma of the food and walked to the living room. On the other side, outside Peter's residence, a large number of agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. have surrounded the entire hotel. The seventh-level agent James is in charge of everything on the scene, while Nick Fury sits in the S.H.I.E.L.D. remote command. Since they traced the true identity of Spider-Man along Norman's interpersonal relationship, what seemed very difficult suddenly became easier. Before Peter and Norman fought, Norman visited Peter's house, and then Peter's house exploded in an instant. On the third day, Norman was killed. With such an obvious clue, if S.H.I.E.L.D. could not confirm Peter's identity, it could close the door directly. So without much effort, they figured out that Spider-Man's real identity is Peter Parker. Later, in order to make the arrest operation foolproof, they spent a few more days, carefully planned the action plan, and even brought electric light guns and laser guns. This is a new high-tech weapon invented by S.H.I.E.L.D. The electric light gun can release a voltage of more than 1,000 volts in an instant, while the limit voltage that a normal person can withstand is 36 volts, so it is conceivable that a thousand volts how powerful is the voltage. And this is just for the purpose of grabbing a living mouth. If that doesn't work out then, the laser gun will also come in handy. The laser gun can emit sodium ion light, the destructive force is enough to penetrate 10 centimeters thick steel plate, and even some special metals can't stop it. So this time, in order to arrest Peter, S.H.I.E.L.D. made a lot of money. As time passed by a little bit, James saw that the watch had reached the designated time, and immediately picked up the walkie-talkie and whispered, action. The order was issued in an instant, and the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. who were already ready quickly broke into the hotel from various entrances and exits. While S.H.I.E.L.D. was in action, on another street not far from James, a bald black man also gave an order to the walkie-talkie at the same time. Attention, they're in, stop them. Receive. There was a reply from the walkie-talkie, and the bald black man's eyes quickly locked on the door of the hotel. Soon a loud noise sounded, and the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents who had filed in were all kicked out. James, who was always paying attention to the movement, discovered the abnormal situation at the first time, and his face sank, what's going on? Soon, the subordinates' report sounded on the walkie-talkie, Mr. James, there are more than 200 people in the hotel blocking the passages, and we have no way to get up. As soon as these words came out, James's brows jumped fiercely, Shet, is the guy in your hands a fire stick? It's for you, not for you to see. Swearing and scolding loudly, James expressed his dissatisfaction. On the other end of the walkie-talkie, it also quieted down with James's scolding. After James finished scolding, the previous subordinate's voice sounded again, and his tone was full of grievances. But among the more than 200 people, there are not only strong men, but also many children and women. What should I do? Just as the subordinate's voice fell, the expression on James's face suddenly froze, and a touch of anger rose from the bottom of his heart and appeared on his cheek. James knows it's a big deal this time. If it were 200 adult men, even if they all held firearms, James would not be afraid at all but there are more than 100 women and children among them. If he dares to order a robbery, he can go to prison tomorrow. Even if the president of the Stars and Stripes Federation is here, in the face of more than 100 women, children will not dare to be hard, otherwise they will definitely be ousted by the people. This has nothing to do with power and social status, but about human relations and morality. Although these two things are not written into the law, they are more deterrent than the law at certain times, such as now. A breath of turbid air was slowly exhaled from his mouth, James calmed down completely, and immediately ordered, get out first, no one is allowed to conflict with them. After speaking, James put the intercom aside, opened the laptop, and connected to Fury's video. When Fury appeared in the video with his eyes on Zhao, James lowered his head apologetically and said, Director, something went wrong with the operation. There are more than 200 people in the hotel, including more than 100 women and children. We can't catch them. Capture Peter Parker. As soon as these words came out, Fury, who was opposite the computer, suddenly flashed a cold light in his eyes, and said in a deep voice, I know, you stay where you are first, pay attention to your surroundings and don't let Peter Parker get away. After that, 
Fury hung up the video directly, and James also obeyed Fury's order and blocked the hotel for four weeks. Especially between the high-rise buildings around the hotel, James is full of snipers. As soon as Peter tries to get away from the tall building, the sniper will fire immediately. Shield, in Fury's office, Fury sat on the office chair with a gloomy face, which made the atmosphere in the office suddenly become extremely depressing. This time, the operation to arrest Peter, Fury had realized from the beginning that it would not go well. Because he saw the figure of the Sharp Claw Corps in the surveillance video, it means that the villain Jin Bing also intervened in this matter. That's why he laid out a careful plan, and even used the high-tech weapons newly developed by S.H.I.E.L.D., not only to capture Peter, but also to guard against money. But he didn't expect that Jin Bing actually used women and children as shields, which instantly made him throw a rat, and everything he prepared carefully was completely ineffective. For a while, Fury only felt that a breath was stuck in his heart, and he wanted to vent, but he didn't know how to vent. In the end, he took out his mobile phone directly from his pocket and called Jin Bing. On the other side, inside the house, Jin Bian was watching an entertainment program with Vanessa in his arms, and Richard was also watching with relish on the other side of the sofa. Just like an ordinary family, it is full of warmth. At this moment, a rush of phone rings rang, and Jin Bing, who had a soft face originally, frowned suddenly, and a fierce aura burst out from his body. Since Jin Bian started a family, he was at home, and the phone never rang again. Most of those who dared to call to disturb him at this time have already fed the fish. As Jin Bing's expression changed, the warm atmosphere in the living room also dissipated immediately. Vanessa raised her head to look at Jin Bing, and took the initiative to bring Jin Bing's mobile phone on the table. Richard also turned his attention to Jin Bing, and he was a little curious about which one would die, and dared to call at this time. Jin Bian took the call and turned on the speakerphone directly. As the call was connected, Fury's low growl sounded. What the asterisk 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 are you trying to do? Do you know that you are challenging my bottom line now? You'd better restrain yourself and withdraw your people, otherwise don't blame me for being rude. Fury's voice came from the mobile phone and slowly echoed in the living room, and the whole living room fell into a strange silence for a while. How long has it been that no one dared to speak to Jin Bing in such a tone? Since Jin Bing killed all his opponents and ascended the throne of the underground emperor, no one dared to speak in such a tone in front of Jin Bing. Jin ignored Fury, but bowed his head and smiled softly at Vanessa, stroking her smooth hair. Suddenly, Vanessa understood, got up slowly from Jin Bing's arms, and walked towards the second floor. Originally, she wanted to call Richard away together, but Richard looked at her pitifully and shook his head. At this, Vanessa smiled dotingly, and didn't insist any longer. She went up to the second floor alone and went back to her room. As Richard's mother, although Vanessa didn't know what happened to Richard during this time, she clearly felt Richard's changes. Coupled with Kim's tacitly general attitude, it was enough for her to see something. So she wouldn't force Richard to do something, because she believed that if Kim didn't want to, she would naturally call Richard away, and now that Kim didn't speak, Vanessa would respect their father and son's choice. It was this kind of gentle and tolerant character that made her walk with Jin Bing, otherwise, if she were an unreasonable and aggressive woman, she would not be able to get Jin Bing's sincerity. After Vanessa left, Jin Jing turned his attention back to the phone. At the same time, the majesty and domineering of the underground emperor on his body was also displayed without reservation at this moment. Let your people prepare for the funeral, they'll be able to use it soon, and you can prepare one yourself, but I'm not sure you can use it. After speaking, Jin Bian directly hung up the phone. The whole process was extremely flat, as if asking what to eat tomorrow, as simple and natural. On the other end of the phone, after hearing Jin Bing's words, Fury's brows instantly wrinkled, and his one eye also showed a fierce light. Jin Bing's power is indeed strong, but is his shield weak? It's just arrogant. While thinking about it, Fury called the phone again and ordered something. At this time, Jin Ning forgot what happened just now, looking at Richard who was doing opposite to him, a trace of curiosity appeared in Ji Yu Jing Wubo's eyes. Richard, what have you done? You actually stimulated that sly fox into such a state that you didn't hesitate to tear your face with me. Jin Bing's tone was still calm, and he didn't mean to be angry at all. Right now, 
he was just a father who wanted to explore his son's little secret. Since sending Daniel to Richard's side, Jin has never paid attention to Richard's news. It's not that I don't care, but it's out of respect for Richard. No one wants everything they do in a day to be presented on another person's desk. That's why Jin asked this scene. Richard, who was sitting across from Phnom Penh, looked at the tall and burly Jin Bing, coughed softly in his mouth, and said in a slightly embarrassed tone, I didn't do anything, just during this time, I had contact with the little spider and then I wanted to he pulled over to be a helper. Now that he is at a critical moment, I didn't want people to disturb him, so I asked Daniel to find a bunch of people to block them. After speaking, Richard scratched his head a little embarrassedly, just like Jin Bing respects him, Richard also respects Jin Bing. If Jin did not ask anything, Richard could choose not to say anything, but since Jin did ask, it is not a secret, Richard will also choose to tell the truth. And in this way, the problem is clear, Jin did not actually do anything, he was completely responsible for Richard, and now he has completely torn his face with shield. Strictly speaking, it was all caused by Richard. In the last life, Richard's behavior can be described in two words, idiot. So he was afraid that with Richard's temperament, he felt a little embarrassed at the moment. Of course, this kind of emotion will only appear when getting along with family members. Otherwise, if it was not Jin Bing, but someone else, Richard would just watch the play with a smile, and even if he had a chance, he would never mind getting caught. With Jin Bing's eyesight, he naturally saw Richard's embarrassed state at a glance, and immediately reached out his big hand and patted Richard's little head. This matter is none of your business. It's only a matter of time before I break my face with him. What you did is just a fuse that completely ignited the explosive pack, that is, without today's phone call, the relationship between me and him is just a matter of time, peace will not last long. Why? Richard asked suspiciously, and Jin Bing explained with a smile, because of the things you brought back, they can't sleep well. After hearing what Jin Bing said, Richard subconsciously froze for a moment and then recalled what he brought back. Super Serum, Human Strengthening Potion, Green Goblin Armor, Flying Skateboard. Thinking of this, Richard reacted instantly. At first, he only wanted to use these things to strengthen his and Jin Bing's strength. But they did not consider what these things mean to a country. Extraordinary Force. In the last life, there was a great man who said very incisively, that power comes from the barrel of a gun. Jinbian has obtained so many good things, and they are basically mature technologies that can be copied. Once Jinbian is allowed to build an extraordinary army, what will the result be? Overthrow the regime, independent country. Jin and maybe really have such an idea, of course, thinking is one thing, doing it is another. Never underestimate the power of a country, let alone a major country like the Stars and Stripes Federation. All kinds of black technologies are emerging one after another. Although what Jin Bing has mastered is good, it is basically unrealistic to overthrow a regime. But even so, it is impossible for the Star-Striped Federation to let such a dangerous time bomb be around, so even if it cannot eradicate Jinping, it will definitely suppress Jinping. After all, on the side of the couch, how could others be allowed to sleep soundly? Therefore, the phone call from Fury just now, in addition to venting his anger, was not without a hint of warning. It's not how good the relationship between him and Jin Bing is, but he needs an opponent, an opponent who can match him evenly. In an era when superheroes have not yet been fully born, if Jin Bian is wiped out, is it necessary for S.H.I.E.L.D. to exist? It is precisely because there are bad people that there are good people, and it is precisely because there are villains that there are decent people. Everything has to set off each other, so before finding a new opponent, Fury is naturally unwilling to gin and fall, and this cannot explain why he made that call. Richard had a headache trying to understand these things, and he had to knock on his head. It was too tiring to deal with these old foxes, and a sentence could be counted 30 steps away. Who would have thought that a simple phone call could contain so many things, it was really tiring. But although Fury doesn't want Jinbian to fall, it doesn't mean that Fury will release water, or even on the contrary, he will definitely do everything possible to destroy Jinbian or suppress Jinbian. Therefore, apart from that phone call, Jin and Fury are still opponents, and even if it is possible to kill each other, neither of them will show any mercy. Wanting to understand this, Richard rolled his eyes and suddenly had an idea in his heart. 
Looking at Jin Bing with an expressionless face, Richard smiled and said tentatively, Would you like me to lend you some people? They are the same as those you met last time, and they are even stronger, powerful. Hearing this, Jin Bing's eyes moved suddenly, remembering the sombra ninja he saw last time, and he was not polite at the moment, and nodded directly, okay. Seeing Jin and agreeing, a smile suddenly appeared on Richard's face. He was really afraid of Jin and refused to agree because of his face, but now it seems that he is thinking too much. Richard didn't talk nonsense at the moment, he directly separated a ray of black energy from his body and merged into Jin Bing's body. In this way, Jin can also summon the Sombra Legion, of course, only limited to the current Sombra Ninja and Claw Shadow Legion, and as long as Richard is willing, he can take back Jin and control the Sombra Legion anytime and anywhere. As a ray of black energy merged into Jin Bing's body, Jin Bing suddenly felt as if he had a certain ability, and he subconsciously mobilized it, and suddenly one after another black shadow Jin Bing appeared behind him. Among them, there are black shadow ninjas and claw shadows. In less than a moment, people from the two major core have occupied the entire living room. Seeing this scene, Jin Bing's eyes flashed for the first time. I just watched Richard's summons before, so I'm a little curious today, but I don't care much. But now, only after experiencing it personally, did Jin Bing know the power of the Black Shadow Core. He is elusive, immortal, and even extremely loyal. They are the best assassins, the best executors, and there is no limit to their numbers. For a time, Jin Bing gave Richard a deep look. For the first time, he intuitively understood how strong Richard was. Looking at Jin Bing's eyes, Richard tried his best to hold his head high, trying to show that domineering attitude in front of outsiders, but looking at Jin Bing's increasingly strange gaze, Richard instantly retreated. Although with the bonus of the Black Shadow Core, Richard's momentum as few people can match, but compared to Jin Bing, a pervert who built an underground kingdom from scratch, there is still a gap. It's not the difference in strength, but the difference in experience. Jin Bing's aura was cultivated by him little by little, and even in terms of his aura, Jin Bing was definitely the man who stood at the top of the world. If Jin Ping was placed in the ancient times of the previous life, a person like him would be equivalent to Zhu Yuanzhong, the founder of the Ming Dynasty, a figure who could conquer the world with nothing. Therefore, in front of such a character, Richard's momentum is not worth mentioning at all. Shaking his head helplessly, Richard turned and walked towards the upstairs room. Looking at the back of him leaving, a gentle smile appeared on Jin Bing's face. If Richard was just a child before the attack, then after the attack, he was already starting to move quickly, growing up. And through the momentum of Richard's body just now, Jin Bing suddenly realized that his son has grown up, not in terms of age, but psychologically. Age will eventually grow up with the passage of time, but psychological growth is not so easy. Only by experiencing one thing after another can we grow psychologically. Otherwise, if you grow old and don't grow your heart, no matter how old you are, you will only be a giant baby. The night passed slowly, and when the sun shone into Richard's room the next morning, Richard stretched comfortably and sat up slowly from the bed. Today is a rare weekend, and Richard plans to visit his laboratory. The group of researchers who had been abducted last time were directly thrown to Jin Bing by Richard, and asked Jin Bing to help him prepare a laboratory. After that, apart from sending the Green Goblin armor, the design drawing of the aircraft and the formula of the human body enhancer, Richard never went to see it again. Now that the holiday has finally arrived, Richard naturally wants to take time to take a look and see how the experimental research is going. The Bronx District, the area closest to the north of the five major urban areas in New York City. It has the most parkland, so the surrounding environment is very quiet. On weekdays, apart from the flow of people walking in the park, even cars seldom come and go here, so Richard's laboratory was chosen by Jin in this place. Daniel drove his car and quickly stopped at the door of a building. There are four strong guards standing at the entrance of the building, with electric batons on their waists. At first glance, they are not easy to mess with, and this is just a security guard in the name of the laboratory. In addition to them, there are 100 security guards with guns inside the building, and the entire building is equipped with surveillance inside and outside. The security measures are the ultimate. And for the sake of confidentiality, the building is shown as being leased, but in fact, no tenants can come here at all. 
I have to say that Jin did put a lot of thought into this laboratory. As Daniel opened the car door, Richard also got out of the car. Seeing the two approaching, the four security guards immediately bowed their heads respectfully. Richard smiled and nodded at them. They walked slowly beside them. The whole building has a total of 10 floors, and the laboratory is on the 8th, 9th, 10th, and 3rd floors, and the area is extremely vast. Moreover, even the elevators have been specially modified. Only those with special magnetic cards can take the elevator to the laboratory. Apart from this elevator, there is no other way to reach the 7th floor and above. In addition, there are several verification measures in the process of using the magnetic card, fingerprint, iris, face scan. After all this is passed, the elevator can actually lead to the 8th floor, 9th floor and 10th floor. Soon with a light ding sound, the elevator stopped on the 8th floor. Richard and Daniel stepped out of the elevator, and suddenly saw the busy people outside the elevator. At this moment, all the researchers are doing their own things, and even if they see Richard coming, no one greets them. Richard doesn't care about this either. Those who can become scientific researchers are basically the type who do practical work. Even if at this moment someone put down the things in hand to greet him, Richard would be really angry. Without disturbing them, Richard wandered around for a while and found a lot of interesting new things, apparently made by the researchers in the laboratory during this time. Richard just glanced curiously at this, and then turned his attention to other places. Without staying on the eighth floor for too long, Richard came here just to declare his presence, lest this group of people even know who their boss is. After getting on the elevator, the elevator stopped on the ninth floor as usual. Richard walked around the laboratory again, and then took the elevator to the top tenth floor. Where there are people, there are rivers and lakes, even these pure scientific researchers are no exception. The researchers on the eighth floor and the ninth floor only study some corners, and only the tenth floor is the real core of the entire laboratory. Just as Richard stepped out of the elevator door, the head of the laboratory, Bitkobo, quickly put down the things in his hand and greeted him. And the current situation is completely different from when he was on the eighth and ninth layers. Richard could not mind ordinary researchers ignoring him, but he could not tolerate Bit ignoring him. Not that Richard was narrow-minded, but because it was a matter of attitude. Just like the ancient emperors went on tour, visiting places, ordinary little officials, it didn't matter if the soldiers came or not, the emperor would not care about them, but if the parents who guarded the place didn't come out to greet them, it would be disrespectful. To put it mildly, contempt for imperial power. To put it more seriously, it is an intention to rebel. Right now, as the head of the laboratory, Bit is in this situation. Obviously, he knew it very well, so after seeing Richard, he put down the things in his hand and rushed to greet him. Under the leadership of Bit, Richard walked around the entire tenth floor. Compared with the eighth and ninth floors, which are all leftovers, the tenth floor is now studying the information that Richard sent last time. Whether it's the green goblin armor, the flying skateboard, or the human body strengthening potion, they have already made their first samples at this moment. And try to improve these three things, watching a large group of people, surrounded by these things, constantly put forward their opinions, Richard did not interrupt, but watched for a while that others followed Bit to his place, office. Professional things are left to professional people to do. This is the choice that the superior should make, not the layman leading the expert. Going up is a blind comparison. So during the visit to the laboratory, Richard didn't say anything until he walked into Bit's office, and Richard opened his mouth to inquire about the progress. How are you optimizing the few things I handed you so far? Hearing this, Bet's face suddenly showed a wry smile. It's okay to say the green goblin armor, we have made some progress, and the finished product can be made in a few days. But the design of the flying skateboard is almost complete, and there really isn't much room for improvement. As for the human body strengthening agent, to be honest, we have no clue at all, and we don't know how to eliminate its side effects, so you are disappointed. As he spoke, Bit lowered his head, with a very guilty look on his face. Seeing this, Richard immediately waved his hand and said indifferently, it's none of your business, I'm a little too anxious. I came here today to ask about the situation, and then look at you. Now that the task has been completed, I will don't bother you anymore. You continue to work hard, and I hope you can solve the side effects of human body enhancers as soon as possible. 
After speaking, Richard greeted Daniel, got up, left the office, and walked towards the elevator. Bit quickly followed Richard's side to see him off, and Bit was completely relieved until he saw Richard get on the elevator and leave. Don't think that Richard didn't get angry just now, but I have seen Richard waiting for me on the other side. I know very well that Richard doesn't get angry easily. So he sent Richard away and returned to the experimental area. Bit suddenly slapped, attracting everyone's attention, and then he said. I have talked to the boss just now. Our current work progress is a little slow. No matter what you think of it, we will introduce these two pieces of individual equipment as soon as possible. When you have nothing to do, think about the formula of the human body strengthening medicine. If anyone has made great contributions to this matter, I will promote whoever is my deputy. As soon as these words came out, the people who were a little absent-minded, showed surprise in their eyes, and responded loudly, yes. In the car, Richard looked at the passing scenery outside the car window, and suddenly asked without turning his head, how is the situation on my father's side? Hearing this, Daniel, who was driving the car, thought for a while before answering. Mr. Wilson issued an order this morning to temporarily suspend all activities in New York City. Other than that, there is no news. Silently listening to Daniel's story, Richard's thoughts quickly turned. A shield and an underground dynasty, both of them are behemoths, implicated in all aspects of the relationship, and it can be said that it affects the whole body. Therefore, the battle between them is naturally impossible to fight and kill like ordinary gangs. At their level, even if the face is torn apart, the conflict cannot happen on the bright side. In this way, no matter how the situation develops, there is still room for recovery, and once violence is used, the consequences will be unbearable for anyone, so the battle between these two behemoths is more in the dark, not in the dark, on the bright side. Of course, if you have the strength to push everything horizontally, that's another story. However, at the moment, Jin Bing's power group obviously does not have the strength to push everything horizontally, let alone the star-striped federation standing behind shield, so naturally there will be no movement on the bright side. For this matter, Richard just paid attention to it, and didn't have any idea of intervening, and he couldn't get involved. Anyway, if things really reached the point of no return, it would not be too late for him to take action again. With the terror of the Black Shadow Corps, although Richard could not retreat everything, it gave him the strength to overturn the table. Putting this matter aside for a while, Richard picked up a newspaper beside him and looked at the information reported on it, a bright light flashed in his eyes. Go to Filton Avenue. Hearing this, Daniel nodded silently, turned the car around, and drove towards Felton Avenue. An exhibition is being held today in front of a clubhouse on Filton Avenue. A large number of media were present, so the scene was very lively, and the shutter sound of the camera kept sounding, recording everything in front of you. After Daniel parked the car outside the exhibition, he quickly got out of the car and opened the door for Richard. Richard got out of the car and looked at the lively scene in front of him with a smile on the corner of his mouth. The world's largest intelligence network is not the FBI, nor the SHIELD agents, but the media of various industries. Although they couldn't explore any top-secret news, they were definitely the first to learn about what happened in every corner of the world. So since Daniel was transferred to Richard's side, Richard told him to prepare newspapers from major mainstream media in the car for Richard to browse. And just now Richard caught a message in a New York Times. Dr. Otto Gunther Octavius will present his latest scientific research results to the outside world today. Maybe you are not familiar with this name, but you must have heard of his nickname, Dr. Octopus. Otto, who was originally born in Skanita, New York, has a poor family background. His father was a factory worker. He was a little violent and alcoholic. He often beat his wife and son for no reason. So young Otto had sworn that he would never be like his father in the future, and he studied hard for this. He went to college, majored in physical sciences, and became a brilliant nuclear physicist, specializing in atomic energy physics, and publishing amazing papers that eventually made him famous and famous in academia. Later, he developed a set of mechanical tentacles, one tentacle can lift eight tons of heavy objects. Simple to operate, completely resistant to radiation energy, powerful, and extremely accurate, he is an uncompromising genius scientist. But unfortunately, due to the limitation of energy, although the mechanical tentacle is amazing, 
because there is not enough energy to drive it, it has completely become a tasteless item, which can be said to be tasteless and a pity to abandon. In the end, major capitals withdrew their investments one after another, bringing Otto's research to a standstill. In this regard, Otto is naturally very unwilling, and can only spend money to start researching new energy sources and perfect the mechanical tentacles, trying to prove himself. But in one experiment, a ruptured pipeline caused radiation to leak out, causing a massive explosion. Although Otto was lucky enough to save his life, he also merged with the four tentacles, and the composition of the radiation caused changes in his brain tissue. Because of the extra four hands, Otto's brain can only rearrange the neural circuits in his body in order to make the body in the best condition. Finally, these tentacles can operate completely according to Otto's thoughts, and finally the most powerful enemy of Spider-Man, Dr. Octopus was born. However, none of this has happened yet. Now Otto is still a famous scientist in New York City, and the product he is about to release today is the mechanical tentacle that completely changed his fate in the latter half of his life. That's why Richard temporarily changed his itinerary and came here. As for the purpose, of course, he wants to bring Otto to his subordinates. He walked into the exhibition following the flow of people. Just as he entered the gate, Richard saw at a glance what was displayed in the exhibition hall, the mechanical tentacles. The mechanical tentacles are all dark golden, about 15 meters in length, and look very huge. Next to the mechanical tentacle, a fat white man was talking to the crowd. With a confident smile on his face, he is wearing a suit made by hand in Italy, and he looks very high-spirited. Richard looked at this man, if he guessed correctly, he should be Otto Gunther Octavius. Seeing the Lord, Richard was not in a hurry to come forward to contact him. As the so-called icing on the cake, it will never be as good as giving help in the snow. Right now Otto is at the peak of his life. In the past, he will only disappear in the crowd. This is not what Richard wants, so he needs to wait for a suitable time. As more and more people came, the exhibition officially kicked off. Facing many reporters and capital, Otto constantly boasted of his latest invention, and also demonstrated it in front of everyone. Immediately, everyone present was amazed for a while, and reporters from major media even kept the camera flashing constantly. For a time, Otto seemed to have become the center of the world, everyone was turning around him, and the smile on his face became more and more energetic. But at this moment, a capital representative suddenly asked a question, Dr. Otto, the ability of the mechanical tentacle is indeed very powerful, but I want to know what to use to drive it, and how long it can be driven. As soon as these words came out, the exhibition hall suddenly became quiet, and everyone's eyes were focused on Otto. Facing the eyes of everyone, Otto and the expressions on their faces froze slightly, and their smiles suddenly restrained a little, and then replied seriously. This problem is also the problem I want to solve at the moment. In the ordinary sense of energy, to drive the mechanical tentacles is not only very expensive, but also extremely short-lived. So we have to develop new energy sources. Only with more powerful energy sources can we fully utilize the effects of the mechanical tentacles. Listening to Otto's explanation, many representatives of the capital side frowned. They who were originally interested in mechanical tentacles suddenly lost their interest at this moment. The ability of the mechanical tentacles is indeed excellent, but if it can't be used, it's just a car without oil, it can't be used, it's a waste. As for the development of new energy, it is even more unreal. Since the beginning of the new century, not only them, but also all countries in the world are developing new energy. However, the harvest is very small. If anyone can develop new energy now, if nothing else, they can make a lot of money from the patent fee alone. Therefore, in their view, Otto is just playing tricks on them, using an almost impossible thing to make them pay, how is this possible? The scene that seemed to be very lively just now suddenly fell into a cold scene. Looking at the reactions of the crowd, Otto was not an idiot, he naturally understood what they were thinking, and Otto suddenly felt anxious, and quickly said, I already have a direction for new energy, as long as I have enough financial support, I will definitely be able to develop. At that time, it will not only be mechanical tentacles, but new energy sources will be enough to recover all the investment. The scene depicted by Otto can be described as very beautiful, but many capital representatives at the scene scoffed at it. 
Otto's words are correct in principle, but who knows how long it will take for new energy to be successfully developed. Ten years, twenty years, they themselves have invested a huge amount of money in new energy, so it is very clear that the research and development of new energy can never be completed overnight, so Otto's words can only convince himself, but he can't convince them. At the moment, the person who asked the question directly interrupted Otto, sorry, I still have something to do, I may have to go first. After speaking, the person turned around and left without stopping, and other capital representatives saw this and said goodbye one after another, leaving only Otto's backs. Watching this scene, Otto's expression became extremely ugly, and the media reporter who had not interjected before also pressed the shutter frantically at this moment, recorded his ugly face, and asked questions repeatedly, wanting to let Otto say check out your current mood and feelings. And this is tantamount to rubbing salt on Otto's wounds. For a while, Otto, who was brilliant just now, disappeared, leaving only the embarrassed Otto who was questioned by reporters. Richard, who was standing outside the crowd, watched this scene, shook his head with a smile, and said to himself, sure enough, it was heaven one second, asterisk 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 the next second. And Daniel, who had been following Richard, looked at the expression on Richard's face and asked in a low voice, Mr. Richard, are you interested in his products? Hearing this, Richard shook his head decisively, no, I'm just interested in him. As for that set of tentacles, it's not suitable for me. Richard has no interest in transforming into any kind of octopus. Although the power of the mechanical tentacles is indeed very powerful, it is not enough to make Richard's heart move. After hearing that Richard was interested in Odd, Daniel asked respectfully, then I'm going to contact him now. Richard pondered for a second, then nodded randomly and said, I'll be waiting for you in the car. After speaking, Richard walked outside the exhibition, while Daniel nodded silently, then walked towards Otto, who was surrounded by reporters. About 20 minutes later, the reporters left the exhibition hall one after another. Soon, Daniel also appeared outside the exhibition with Alto and walked towards the place where the cars were parked. When he came to the car, Daniel opened the passenger door and made a gesture of invitation to Otto. Otto hesitated for a moment, and finally clenched his teeth and lowered his head to get into the car. But when he saw Richard sitting in the car, Otto's expression suddenly changed. Didn't you say your boss is willing to invest in me? Why is a child here? Hearing this, and sitting behind the vehicle, Richard suddenly leaned forward slightly, with a smile on the corner of his mouth, and said calmly, I'm his boss, is there any problem? As Richard opened his mouth, the atmosphere in the car suddenly changed, and a solemn atmosphere slowly greeted the carriage. Looking at Richard in front of him, Otto felt a moment of depression for some reason, and even his breathing couldn't help but stop. However, Otto is worthy of being the future Dr. Octopus. Although he was captured by Richard's momentum for a while, he quickly broke free. But this time, Otto didn't dare to treat Richard as a child. He took a deep breath and said seriously and seriously, Sir, do you want to invest in me? In this regard, Richard nodded slightly, and then introduced himself. My name is Richard Fisker, you will call me boss in the future, I have seen your invention, it is a good invention. But the lack of energy makes your invention worthless. Now I'll give you the opportunity to continue to improve your mechanical tentacle, find a way to implant it into the human body, and be able to operate as flexibly as an arm, this is your next task. Hearing this, Otto's brows instantly wrinkled, no no no, the mechanical tentacle is already perfect, even without your investment, I can completely perfect it. What I need now is investment in energy, I want to develop energy that can drive mechanical tentacles. Your statement is not what I expected, so I cannot accept your investment. Hearing Otto's refusal, Richard's mouth suddenly showed a smile, do you think you still have a choice? The capital side has given up their investment in you. If I'm not mistaken, you have already invested all your wealth in order to develop the mechanical tentacles. Once you don't have the favor of capital, you will not only lose everything, but your research will also be suspended indefinitely. The mechanical tentacles you are proud of will probably only be left in the warehouse to dust in the future. So are you really going to say no? As Richard's voice fell, Otto, who had reacted violently, instantly fell silent, and the atmosphere in the car became a little depressed for a while. Feeling the somewhat depressing atmosphere, Richard slowed down his tone, and his tone was no longer as strong as it was at the beginning. Instead, 
he said with a hint of guidance. Besides, who said that only powerful energy can drive mechanical tentacles, compared to from the so-called energy, the human body is the greatest treasure. A tens-year-old old lady can lift a car when a crisis breaks out, while a mother of a child can break through her own limits and hold up a wall when her child is in danger. So the human body is the greatest energy treasure. You don't have to be obsessed with the development of new energy, you can start from this aspect, what do you think? Richard's words fell into Otto's heart, like a twilight drum and a morning bell, opening his mind and allowing him to see another direction. For a while, although Otto didn't say anything, the originally persistent expression on his face gradually became relaxed. Seeing this, Richard knows that this wave is stable. Compared to Peter, conquering Otto seemed easy, but it actually took Richard a lot of work. What he said above is not nonsense, not to mention that in the original plot, Otto used himself to drive the mechanical tentacles. Just the two examples that Richard just gave are what really happened in his last life. The human body contains infinite potential, but this potential is locked by some kind of gate, and in a critical state, some people can break through the gate and burst into power beyond the limit. These are all real. It's just that because the body of ordinary people is too fragile to withstand this power beyond the limit, after the explosion, the vitality in his body is also exhausted. In this life, although Richard doesn't know if there are any examples of ordinary people erupting beyond the limit of power, the rampant power of all kinds of extraordinary power also proves Richard's point of view. If it is not for the infinite potential in the human body, can those so-called super serums or human body enhancers really change a person instantly? In Richard's view, these things are more like the keys to open the door. So in order to convince Otto, Richard did make some preparations. And now it is time for Otto to make a choice. If he still insists on developing new energy sources, Richard will not continue to persuade him, but whether he can get off the car or not is a question. Anything that cannot be used only by me must be destroyed only by me. This is Richard's standard of conduct, he will not foolishly let a supervillain who is extremely powerful in the future leave safely. Otherwise, these people will definitely have a conflict of interest with him in the future, and he will not be so brainless that he knows it is a big trouble, and he will let it go. Therefore, if you have the opportunity, you will naturally not mind eradicating potential opponents. Of course, all of this was just Richard's thoughts, but it didn't show the slightest on the surface, and Otto, who was sitting in the co-pilot, didn't know that one of his feet had stepped into the gate of asterisk 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 at this moment. After thinking for a long time, Otto finally raised his head, looked directly at Richard and said, Boss. Hearing this, Richard smiled and nodded at him. Very good, you made a wise decision, you go back first, and someone will contact you later. Hearing this, Otto nodded and wanted to get out of the car, but before getting out of the car, Otto paused and said hesitantly, Boss, can I know, is that capital group behind you? Of course, Richard didn't have any secret thoughts about his identity, so he said it directly. My father is Wilson Fisker. As soon as the voice fell, Otto's expression was shocked, and a shocked expression suddenly appeared on his face. In New York City, you don't have to know who the boss is, but you must know who Wilson Fisker is. It's a legendary name, and even just the name alone can make people feel a bit overwhelming. Otto did not expect that Richard was actually the son of Wilson, and now there is no doubt about Richard's strength. As Otto left, Daniel, who had been beside the car, sat in the driver's seat. Looking at Richard sitting in the back seat with his eyes closed, Daniel asked in a low voice, Mr. Richard, we where are you going now? When the words fell, Richard gave the answer directly, go home. And Daniel nodded silently, and when the car started, he slowly left the place. It was a pleasant surprise to conquer Otto, and it was not in Richard's plan before. So Richard seems to be closing his eyes and resting, but in fact he is checking the system. Main Quest The Dark Alliance Explanation There is no limit to how to form your own alliance. The strong person is not only powerful, but also has several powerful subordinates. This task is a long-term task. Reward Every time you join a system-approved member of the Dark Alliance, you will be rewarded with a lottery. Congratulations, you conquered Dr. Octopus, the reward has been issued, please check it yourself. Character Attributes Panel Name Richard Fisk Age 9 years old Status Son of Wilson Fisker Skills Ninja Core 
Claw Core, Sheep Charm, Snake Charm, Dragon Charm. Items. None. Draw. Once. Member of the Dark Alliance. Dr. Octopus. Looking at the members of the Dark Alliance added to the character attribute panel, Richard was instantly filled with emotion. He originally thought that the first member should be Peter, but he didn't expect that by accident, Dr. Octopus became the darkness. The first member of the Alliance can only be said to be fate. After checking the changes in personal information, Richard finally set his sights on the most important part of the lottery. The lottery is the foundation to ensure Richard's own strength, and it is also the thing that Richard looks forward to the most. Without any hesitation, Richard gave the order directly in his mind, lottery draw. Suddenly, after waiting for a long minute, Richard's mind remembered the cold electronic synthesis sound of the system. Congratulations, you have obtained the troll core, one of the nine ghost core. After speaking, the system fell into silence again, and Richard opened his eyes instantly, and his eyes shone with surprise. Troll core, referred to as Juing, this core is just like its name. The members of the core are huge. A giant shadow, as high as 3 meters, although the agility is slightly insufficient, but the strength is extremely powerful, placed on the frontal battlefield, it is definitely a veritable killing machine. Just relying on the huge stature to crush it is enough to push the soldiers of various countries. Greatly complements Richard's ability on the frontal battlefield. So far, Richard has mastered three Sombra Corps in total. The first one, Sombra Ninja, is good at assassination, infiltration, poisoning, gathering intelligence, and can use various weapons. The second part, Claw Shadow Corps, greatly enhanced the offensive, the most perfect assassin in the Dark Knight. If Sombra Ninja is equivalent to a spy, a special agent, then the Claw Shadow Corps is similar to a killer. Now, coupled with the third giant Shadow Corps, which is suitable for head-to-head -head confrontation, it has perfectly formed a complete army of arms. Once a battle breaks out in the future, the strength that can be exerted by the cooperation of these three corps is definitely 1 or 2 percent stronger than that of them acting alone. Therefore, although the appearance of the giant shadow core did not change Richard's forces dramatically, it was greatly enhanced. It gave Richard a more calm confidence for the future. When the car stopped in front of the house, Richard told Daniel something about Otto and sent him away. When he got home, Richard didn't go out anymore but stayed quietly as a good baby for two days and then went back to school. Time flies, half a month has passed, Otto entered the laboratory under Richard's arrangement, continued to study his mechanical tentacles, and was temporarily isolated from the outside world. On Peter's side, according to the information sent by Daniel, Peter still stayed in the room and was depressed all day. Although the storm had completely passed and seemed to be forgotten, as a party, Peter still did not come out. Similarly, around the hotel where Peter lived, the S.H.I.E.L.D. personnel did not withdraw, as if they were completely exhausted with Richard. Richard naturally didn't care about this, anyway, it depends on who spends the most. The women and children in the hotel were all hired by Richard at Daniel's expense. A total of two groups of people were hired to guard the hotel 24 hours a day. As long as the S.H.I.E.L.D. personnel dared to try to break in, they would immediately stop them. And in the public, Shield is impossible to do, so there is no danger at all. Even those women and children took this errand completely as a job, going to work every day and leaving get off work at the same time, and working two shifts every other week, without having to do anything, and receiving a generous salary, so good where can I find it at work? In this regard, the people of Shield have also come up with various methods, coercion, temptation, and even after they get off work, forcibly arrest some people, trying to scare them away. But unfortunately, the effect was very small, and the desired effect could not be achieved at all, because no matter how many people they arrested, there would still be so many people stuck here the next day. And this matter can't be carried out with great fanfare, otherwise once it is exposed, things will become more troublesome. The exposure of the words of Spider-Man's true identity is enough to arouse everyone's curiosity. Curious people give it a try. So the two sides can only stand in a stalemate like this. In addition, the struggle between Jin Bing and Shield has not stopped for half a month. Not only did it not subside as time passed, but it became more and more intense. Through official power, Shield seized a lot of Jinbian's business, and even destroyed two sources of Jinbian. And Jin Bing's counterattack was also extremely fast. 
all federal members who participated in these operations were exposed to black material on the internet almost the day after the operation. There is even evidence of a crime. As soon as these things came out, a large amount of public attention was immediately gathered, and countless people petitioned, called the report number, and demanded that these people be severely punished. There was even a parade on the street, which caused the impact of this incident to become particularly huge. In the end, the Star Stripe Federation had to come forward, and all the operatives and related personnel who had made great contributions were dismissed and investigated. These are naturally controlled by Jin Bing. As the underground emperor of New York City, these things are nothing to Jin Bing at all, they are just an order. And the matter is here, it is not over, on the contrary, this is just the beginning, just after these people were fired, an accident happened. Some were just dismissed, just packed up and left the unit, but were hit by a car as soon as they went out. The driver who caused the accident did not run when he saw that he had hit the dead person, and just waited for the arrival of the Stars and Stripes Federal Police. The detention and detention, the compensation and compensation, are extremely cooperative. Another part of the people, when eating, either ate the screw or the blade, and went to the hospital as a result. And the doctors in the hospital, because they used the wrong potion, caused them to die directly on the hospital bed. Afterwards, the doctor was suspended from practicing medicine for life, but not only did he not worry about it, but he smiled as if he had encountered something happy. As for those who had committed crimes, they were much more fortunate than those who lived two days longer. It was not until the judge judged their crimes and sent them to prison that the accident happened suddenly. They only stayed in the prison for one day. As a result, at noon that day, everyone in the entire prison suffered from food poisoning, but the strange thing was that the other prisoners were after taking the medicine, it got better soon, and this batch of them all died suddenly after taking the medicine. In the end, after inspection, it was determined that there was a special substance left in their bodies, which alone would not cause harm to the human body, but once they meet with a certain substance, it will become highly poisonous. Coincidentally, this substance is contained in the medicine for the treatment of food poisoning. So far, all those who participated in the destruction of Golden Business have all died because of various accidents. For a time, the news spread throughout the political arena in New York City, making everyone feel panic. Anyone with a discerning eye can see that Jin Bian did this, but you can't come up with any evidence. For this reason, S.H.I.E.L.D. even went down to investigate these things in person, but only one result was obtained for everything, accident. No matter how they inquired or tried, all the personnel related to this matter insisted on the word accident. But, how can there be so many surprises in the world? This made everyone see how terrifying the power of the underground emperor Jin Bing was. He has killed so many people in an upright manner, but everything can only be classified as an accident, not even a criminal case. For this reason, S.H.I.E.L.D. was very angry, and Fury gave an order angrily to let people continue to destroy Jinbian's business and attack Jinbing. But this time, in the face of such an order, no one dared to accept it. If they were to force an order, they would rather resign. After all, no one wants to make fun of their own life, isn't it bad to live? And some big figures in the New York City Forum have also started to beat S.H.I.E.L.D. and let them stop. For a time, S.H.I.E.L.D. was completely at a disadvantage in the confrontation with Jin Bing. Inside S.H.I.E.L.D., Fury sat on the main seat of the conference room, with the core members of S.H.I.E.L.D. on both sides. Even James was temporarily transferred back, and a fifth-level agent went to the hotel to watch. A depressing and dignified atmosphere permeated the conference room, and everyone's faces were a little ugly at the moment. How long, how long has no one dared to provoke them like this? Since the establishment of S.H.I.E.L.D., apart from being a little weak at the beginning, it has quickly grown into a behemoth. The strength is only stronger than that of some small countries. Even if it is placed in the Stars and Stripes Federation, there are very few organizations that can compare with S.H.I.E.L.D. Even the FBI, which has a strong reputation in the outside world, is completely a younger brother in the face of S.H.I.E.L.D. Only the more mysterious Area 51 can be compared with S.H.I.E.L.D. But this time against Jin Bing, S.H.I.E.L.D. suffered an unprecedented setback. They just destroyed some of Jin Bing's business, but Jin Bing killed everyone with his backhand. Moreover, these people also died in accidents, and there was no way for them to get gold. 
Although none of the S.H.I.E.L.D. personnel were injured, the prestige of S.H.I.E.L.D. has been hit unprecedentedly. This invisible loss makes them even more annoyed. You know, although prestige is illusory, it is very important. Although the Star Spangled Federation is a whole, under this whole, it is composed of forces and groups, and exchanges and cooperation are indispensable with each other on weekdays. In the past, although S.H.I.E.L.D. was not well known in the outside world, it was famous in the system. As long as people who reached a certain level, heard the three words S.H.I.E.L.D., they would be in awe. In the face of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s requirements, they rarely dared to violate it. Even this time, S.H.I.E.L.D. united various departments to suppress Jinping, and all departments agreed without a word. These all stem from the prestige of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the powerful strength of S.H.I.E.L.D. But now, all the staff who helped S.H.I.E.L.D. to suppress the Jinbian forces have not only been dismissed and investigated, but they have all died in accidents, and S.H.I.E.L.D. can't even seek justice for them. Who is willing to help S.H.I.E.L.D. in this way? This is like the relationship between a big brother and a younger brother, the younger brother helps the big brother to work his life, and the big brother helps the younger brother shelter from the wind and rain. Now that the younger brother has lost his life, but the elder brother can't even get justice, who would accept such a person as the elder brother? So now targeting Jin is not because of the above tasks, but because S.H.I.E.L.D. wants to restore the lost prestige, it must make Jin and serve soft, and even be able to directly eliminate Jin and the best. Therefore, looking at the ugly people, Fury's low tone also sounded slowly, tell me about your own thoughts and come up with a solution, at least let Jin Bing take the initiative to bow his head. As soon as these words came out, James immediately stood up and said with a serious expression, since Jin can create accidents, so can we. And this method is exactly what we are good at. Hearing this suggestion, Fury didn't even think about it, and refused directly, no. Do you know how many people Jinbian has? Compared to our shield only a lot, can you still kill hundreds of thousands of people? Hearing this, James was a little unconvinced and said, we can pick Jin and start with the backbone of his subordinates. Once the backbone of his subordinates is damaged too much, I want to see how Jin Bing can control such a large underground kingdom alone. James's voice of reasoning sounded, and the expressions of many people in the conference room moved slightly, apparently agreeing with this proposal. However, Fury said with a sullen face at this time, I don't think you have forgotten about the invasion of our shield. Do you know what will happen to you once the assassination is carried out? As soon as these words came out, everyone suddenly woke up, shield was invaded, and it was impossible for them to forget such a big event. It's just that they didn't know that it would be Jin Bing's men who invaded shield. Because the original investigation results were directly submitted to Fury, and Fury did not tell them about it. Therefore, when this matter was revealed, under the ugly faces of everyone, a touch of fear suddenly rose. They have all seen the video when S.H.I.E.L.D. was invaded, and they have a particularly deep memory of the group of men in black who disappeared without a trace. If once an assassination plan is launched, Jin will definitely not sit still, and these people will definitely be dispatched. If they are targeted by these people, will they still survive? Thinking of these people, they were immediately scared, including James, everyone stopped mentioning the so-called assassination plan. Seeing this, Fury, who was sitting in the main seat, saw a flash of disappointment in the depths of his eyes. Although he did not agree with the assassination plan, it still made him feel a little unhappy to see the group of people under him being so afraid of death. But at the moment, how to deal with Jin Bing is the most important thing, so Fury is too lazy to care about them. Glancing at the silent crowd, Frey thought for a while, and finally stood up slowly and said, I will handle this matter, you don't have to intervene, I will give you three days, I want to see Jin and an information about all the forces under his command. After that, Fury got up and left the conference room, leaving everyone present to look at each other. On the other hand, after Fury left the conference room, he did not go back to his office, but went to the 31st underground floor. The 30th underground floor is where the shield resides, where all kinds of top secret materials are placed, while the 31st underground floor is the experimental organization of the shield. A group of top scientists are gathered here, and the high-tech weapons used by shield are also produced here. In the entire shield, apart from scientific researchers, only the director of shield, Fury, can enter the 31st floor. As the elevator door slowly opened, a vast laboratory suddenly appeared in front of Fury. Looking around, 
hundreds of researchers in white coats are busy researching. And Fury didn't bother them, but went directly to the person in charge of the laboratory, Sawyer L. Seeing Fury's arrival, Suoya was a little surprised. In general, Fury rarely made it to the 31st floor, so watching Fury's arrival, Suoya couldn't help but ask, Director, why are you here? Hearing this, Fury did not hide it, and said frankly, how is the super soldier plan going? I need the help of a super soldier now. After listening, Suoya nodded and said, the super serum you sent you, Director, has already been successfully studied, so it didn't take much effort. Now 100 people have been injected with super serum, and they have been successfully strengthened. Now they are in the training room, cooperating with us in data collection. Hearing this news, Fury suddenly felt relieved, and you slowly showed a smile on his face. Take me to see. Follow Soya to the training room, the training room is full of people. They are doing all kinds of tests, from strength, to speed, to physical strength, while researchers are carefully recording them. This group of people are all elites selected by Fury, and they are very loyal to him. They are also one of the most powerful cards in Fury's hand. Originally, he did not intend to use this whole card, but now the situation has developed to such an extent that it has completely deviated from his expectations, so he can only use force to bring things back on track. As Fury and Sawyer walked into the training room, everyone in the training room immediately noticed their arrival. At this moment, all the members subconsciously stood at attention and quickly gathered in front of Fury. And Fury just stood there with his hands behind his back, with a majestic look on his face, and he didn't even speak a word. It can be seen that Fury has a high status in the hearts of this group of people. Watching this scene, Suoya and a dozen researchers stood aside obediently and did not jump out to destroy the atmosphere in front of them. After they were lined up, Fury nodded with satisfaction. Very good, you must have already felt the changes in your body. From now on, you will no longer be mortals, and you will have powerful strength to face even more vicious opponents. And now it's time for you to debut, give you one day to prepare, and start the action tonight. I will send you the content of the task when it arrives. I hope you don't let me down. Clear, hundreds of super soldiers replied in unison, all of them were full of high fighting spirit and Fury didn't talk nonsense anymore. After a few words of encouragement, he turned and left. Back in his office, Fury leaned back on the chair, closing his eyes and perfecting his plan in his mind. In fact, his plan is very simple, use absolute force to completely defeat Jin and defeat. He didn't have such an idea before, but after several rounds of confrontation, Fury intuitively realized that Jin Bian had penetrated into all aspects of his underground kingdom. Whether it is politics, folk, or high society, Jin Bing has built a tight network of relationships, just like a towering tree with deep roots. If you continue to let it go, sooner or later, Jin Bian will be so powerful that even the star-striped federation can't balance it. In addition, Jin Bian successively obtained super serum, human body enhancer, and top-notch individual equipment. These things, combined with the power of Jin Bian, can explode the destructive power that is definitely not as simple as 1 plus 1 equals 2. So no matter what Fury thought before, now he just wants to completely knock down this towering tree. Of course, once the gold falls, the consequences are also extremely serious. If nothing else, the chaos caused by the loss of gold and the forces of his subordinates is unpredictable. Not to mention that there is never a shortage of careerists in this world. Once Jin and Fall, Countless people will surely swarm up and devour the benefits left after Jin and Fall. So Fury needs a helper, a helper who can stand with him. Not only to help him share the pressure after the incident, but also to help him deal with Jin Bing together, otherwise, just relying on the 100 super soldiers in his hand, trying to bring down Jin Bing is a complete joke. Not only because of the existence of the Black Shadow Core, but also because the super serum in Fury's hands was obtained from Jin Bing. Since he has already cultivated super soldiers, how could Jin Bing not have it? So no matter what the reason is, he urgently needs a helper now. Soon a name popped out of Fury's mind, General Ross. General Ross had had a strong conflict with Jin Ping before, but he reconciled himself and barely calmed down that turmoil. Presumably, there is still resentment in his heart right now. If it is said that in the entire Star-Striped Federation, 
who is most suitable to be his helper, then it must be General Ross. Thinking of this, Fury immediately took out his mobile phone and called General Ross. In a certain military building, General Ross, who was sitting at his desk and processing documents, suddenly heard a rush of bells ringing aside. With a slight frown, General Ross put down the things in his hand, picked up the phone, and looked at the caller ID, a hint of surprise flashed in General Ross's eyes, but he still chose to connect. After connecting the phone, General Ross was not in a hurry to speak, but waited for Fury on the opposite side of the phone to speak first. And Fury didn't detour, and said bluntly, General Ross, I need your help. I'm going to take action against Kim, so I need your support. Fury's straight-to-the-point words made General Ross stunned for a moment, but being able to sit in this position, General Ross is not an idiot, naturally it is impossible for Fury to say what he says. Although S.H.I.E.L.D. is powerful and influential, it still cannot affect the military. In fact, the military is the biggest force in the Stars and Stripes Federation. Why should I help you? I didn't get an order, so I can choose to refuse. Hearing this, Fury on the other end of the phone frowned with a headache. General Ross's attitude had been expected before the call. After all, the conflict between him and Jin Bing was that he was responsible for mediation, so although General Ross had no direct conflict with him, he would not give him any good looks. And now in order to gain the support of General Ross, even if General Ross's cold-spoken attitude, he can only suffer. General Ross, you should know that there can be no order on this kind of thing otherwise it will not be handed over to me shield, the impact is too great. In this regard, a sneer appeared on General Ross's face, what does this have to do with me, I still have military affairs to deal with here, so I won't accompany me. After speaking, General Ross planned to hang up the phone, and after listening to Fury, he couldn't help but scolded in his heart, vampire. Then he said again, Super Laser Gun, an upgraded version of the Shield Laser Gun, the latest top-notch individual weapon. If you agree to support me, I will have someone send you the design drawings in a moment. When he said this, Fury's heart was bleeding, but there was no way. General Ross made it clear that he would not throw eagles if he didn't see the rabbit. He said so much before, but he just wanted to benefit from his own hands. I can only recognize it by pinching my nose. Sure enough. After Fury finished speaking, General Ross's hearty laughter came from the other end of the phone. Director Fury is too polite. In that case, I will accept it. I will greet the people below, and someone will contact you later. After that, General Ross hung up the phone directly, while Fury's face was gloomy. Just as Fury was doing all kinds of preparations, Richard and Kim were soaking in the gym on the other side. Exercise has become Jin Bing's habit, and Richard has been watching for a long time and is also influenced by Jin Bing. From time to time, he will do some exercises in the gym. While these general exercises didn't improve Richard's fitness, they did make him sweat and move his body. So Richard didn't mind either, adding a little more exercise. Don't look at Richard's young age, but because of the feedback from the Black Shadow Corps, his physical quality is definitely not low. Although he is not as good as Jin Bing, a pervert who has reached the limit of the human body, he is stronger than ordinary special forces. With the continuous movement of the two, a layer of sweat suddenly appeared on the surface of the body, and at this time, Jin Bing, who was sitting in a push-up, suddenly said, I have booked a flight ticket and plan to send you and Vanessa to Italy. Turn and leave tomorrow. Hearing this, Richard, who was also doing push-ups, paused slightly and then resumed his movements again. I won't go, I'll send Vanessa to the flower-growing country, where is more secure. Hearing this, Jin Bian slowly stopped moving, turned around and sat on the ground, looking at Richard, looking a little silent. And Richard stopped after doing another set of push-ups, and wiped the sweat from his face with a towel, a smile appeared on his face. I'm not a child anymore, I can help you. Jin Bing shook his head and said calmly, the situation is not so bad yet, I just don't want you to be in such an environment, the lower limit of the Star Stripe Federation is definitely lower than you think. Hearing this, Richard sat cross-legged across from Jin Bing, staring straight at Jin with majestic eyes, and the expression on his small face gradually became serious, it's like you don't feel like us. I also can't worry about you, you are so big and your target is so conspicuous, if an accident should happen, it will be difficult to escape. You know my abilities, so listen to me. 
This is the first time that Richard has a disagreement with Jin Bing, and they are full of persistence on this matter, and no one is willing to back down. For a time, one big and one small stared at each other in the gym like this, and no one refused to step back. Until after a while, Jin Bian suddenly moved. Don't look at his burly stature, but his speed is like an agile cheetah, making it too late to react. Jin Bing's fist brought a strong wind and roared towards Richard's face. The sudden scene suddenly shocked Richard, but his reaction speed was not slow. The body suddenly leaned back, the whole person completely lay on the ground, kicked Jin Bing's chest directly, and finally Jin Bing's fist rubbed the tip of Richard's nose. The strong wind made Richard's face aching, and Richard kicked it firmly on Jin Bing's chest, and there was a muffled sound. With the power of this kick, Richard's figure jumped back, instantly opening the distance between him and Jin. Looking at Jin Bing again, he took Richard's foot hard, but he didn't even shake his body. His burly body was like a giant mountain, standing firmly in place. On the contrary, it was Richard who only felt numbness on the soles of his feet, and then looked at Jin Ping who was motionless, and couldn't help but scolded a pervert in his heart. However, Jin didn't give him too much time to think about it. He couldn't make a single blow, and Jin jumped up instantly and attacked Richard again. At this moment, Jin Bing's aura was like a violent bear, violent and domineering. Richard, who saw this scene, couldn't help but feel a little tight, but there was no fear in his eyes. Instead, he seemed extremely indifferent and full of reason. With a stroke of the palm, a flame appeared directly in Richard's hand, and was immediately thrown out by him, heading towards Jin and roaring away. Looking at this scene, Jin Bing, who launched the attack, moved his expression, his figure flashed, and he directly avoided the flames. In the next second, the flames smashed on the wall in the distance, and suddenly a violent roar broke out. The entire wall directly broke a big hole, and the raging flames scattered in all directions, and immediately burned. In such a scene, Jin Bing suddenly stopped and looked back at the broken wall. Jin Bing's original aura like a violent bear dissipated immediately, and the whole person became peaceful again. He didn't ask Richard why he had the extra flame ability, nor did he show any curiosity, and there was not even a trace of superfluous surprise on his face. He just said in a flat tone, I will send Vanessa to a flower-growing country, and learn how to cook by the way. Immediately, he walked slowly past Richard's side and left the gym. The sensible expression on Richard's face suddenly disappeared, and a happy smile appeared on his face. Looking at the raging flames, Richard just waved his hand, and all the flames subsided instantly. If the little lion wants to become the Lion King, he must defeat the Lion King and prove his ability. The confrontation between the father and son just now seemed dangerous, but in fact it was just a test of King and Richard. If you want to stay, you can show the strength that can convince me, this is Jin Bing's attitude. And now, it is clear that Richard has done it, although neither Jin Bing nor Richard have used all their strength, maybe even less than one-tenth. But Richard still got Kim Bing's approval to stay. At the same time, Richard was also curious about Jin Bing's strength at this moment. According to the official information from the previous life, Jin Bing did not have any special abilities. All he has is persistence, day after day, year after year. In the end, I raised my physical fitness to the limit of the human body, and became the best fighting master. But judging from the strength Jin Bing showed just now, Richard is sure that Jin Bing's strength is definitely not just the limit of the human body. After all, the data of the previous life can only represent the data of Jin Bing in the movie, but not the real strength of Jin Bing in this world. Just like the theory that Richard Fudge Otto said, the human body is a treasure with infinite potential, but this treasure is locked by the gate valve. Through various black technologies or mutations, people have opened this gate and released the potential of the human body. Is it possible for Jin to open the door by himself through day after day persistence and year after year? Richard was not sure about this, and even he didn't know whether the human gate valve he had guessed existed. For a time, Jin Bing's image suddenly became mysterious in Richard's mind. The next morning, Richard did not go to school, but followed Jin Bing and took Vanessa to the airport together. In the airport VIP room, Vanessa hugged Richard and rested her head on Jin Bing's shoulder. A ray of sadness about parting lingered on the family of three. Richard could clearly see the reluctance in Vanessa's eyes, but even so, Vanessa didn't say anything about staying. 
Not because she was afraid of the dangers of staying, but because she didn't want to be a drag on her husband and son by staying. Therefore, no matter how reluctant she was, Vanessa put down Richard and lifted her head from Jinbing's shoulders at the beginning of the ticket check. Squatting down and touching Richard's little face, Vanessa tried her best to show a smile as gentle as before, exhorting. You have to obey your father's words, don't be naughty, don't be naughty, do you hear? Hearing this and seeing the tenderness in Vanessa's eyes, Richard rarely showed a child's dependence. I see. Hearing this, Vanessa smiled and said nothing more. She got up and turned to look at Jin Bing, hugged him silently, and pecked at the corner of Jin Bing's mouth, and said, Take care of yourselves. Chad, take care of yourself, I'll wait for you to pick me up. In response, Jin nodded and kissed Vanessa on the forehead. Jin is not someone who can speak tender words, so he can only express it with actions. Richard, who was on the side, watched this scene, and for some reason a word suddenly appeared in his mind. The child is just an accident, the couple is the true love. I'm done with this bowl of dog food. How reluctant to part, after all, Vanessa stepped on the plane to the flower-growing country. After Richard and Jin watched the plane take off, they turned around and walked outside the airport. For Vanessa's safety, Jin and Richard are not very worried, Jin and sent manpower protection, Richard also mobilized 3,000 dark shadow troops, to protect. If there is still an accident like this, Richard can also quickly take Jin and you through the kingdom of shadows and go to Vanessa's side as soon as possible. So Vanessa's safety doesn't need to be worried. Opened the car door and sat in the co-pilot, Jin Bing sat in the main driver, and the car started to go in the direction of home. Looking at the traffic on the highway, Richard asked, Do you have any plans for the future? In response, Jin shook his head and did not answer Richard's question. And Richard didn't care, he said to himself, Since you don't have a plan, then I'll play by myself, and see who is more powerful when the time comes. After speaking, Richard himself laughed first, and the corners of Jin Bing's mouth were slightly upturned, okay. After sending Richard back home, Jin didn't stay at home much and left directly, while Richard called Daniel and asked Daniel to take him to Peter's hotel. The plan to blacken Peter has been going on for a long time, and now it's almost time for the end, and Richard, who planned all this, should naturally show up at this moment to meet Peter, the Spider-Man. When the car was parked in front of the hotel, Richard immediately found the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's not that Richard's observation is so keen, it's just that these people don't even bother to hide now. After all, this matter has dragged on for so long, and the exposure has long been exposed, so naturally there is no need to hide it. For these people, Richard glanced at them and ignored them, and took Daniel directly into the hotel. The hotel lobby was filled with more than 200 people, guarding various entrances and exits, which caused the hotel's business to decline a lot during this period. If they were ordinary people, the hotel owner would have driven them out long ago, but now they are from Jin Bing, let alone driving them out, the hotel owner has to serve them with delicious food every day. Of course, Richard didn't bother to bully these ordinary people, so he naturally gave a lot in terms of money. Therefore, in actual calculation, the hotel owner did not lose money, but made a fortune. With the appearance of Daniel and Richard, the black bald head who was specially responsible for dealing with this matter immediately greeted them. But he didn't know Richard, so he just said hello to Daniel, and then looked at Richard with a curious corner of his eye. Naturally, Richard didn't care about this, and walked slowly past him, while Daniel nodded at the black man's bald head, and Richard, who quickly followed, looked like a sidekick. Such a scene immediately filled the black bald head with surprise. Who didn't know that Daniel was a popular man beside Wilson, a real big man, and now the big man has obviously become a sidekick, that child's identity. Thinking of this black man's bald head, he was instantly startled, and he didn't dare to continue to think about it at the moment, and even the corners of his eyes were quickly put away. Who doesn't know now that Jin and the underground emperor cared about his family, and anyone who tried to inquire about his family's situation was thrown into the sea to feed the fish. He didn't want to be the next one himself. Silently put away his thoughts, the black bald head continued to perform his duties. Richard and Daniel took the elevator to Peter's floor. After getting out of the elevator, Daniel stepped forward to lead the way, and finally the two stopped at the door of a hotel room. Daniel took out a room card out of nowhere, swiped at the door, and the door opened instantly. 
As the room opened, there was darkness in front of Richard's eyes, and there was a peculiar smell in the air. At the moment, Richard's brows are slightly raised, and there is a trace of disgust on his face. But he still patiently walked in, while Daniel walked to the window, opened the curtains, and suddenly a ray of sunlight came in, piercing the darkness. And it was only at this time that Richard could clearly see Peter's state at the moment. His hair is messy, his clothes are slightly yellow, his face is covered with stubble, and his eyes are dull. Such a scene almost made Richard dare not recognize it. Is this still the superhero Spider-Man who used to be famous in New York City? Right now, in his image, no one finds it strange that he is a tramp. Richard made a tut-tut in his mouth, and he suddenly had an intuitive understanding of cyber-violence in his heart. Even the former superheroes have become such ghosts under the influence of cyber-violence. It is indeed a rumor, which is more terrifying than ghosts and ghosts. Richard didn't feel any guilt about this, completely ignoring that this cyber-violence was instigated by him. Looking at Peter who was in a trance, Richard didn't mean to speak at all. He directly ordered Daniel, clean him up and make him sober. In addition, help me invite Ms. May to have dinner at the restaurant together. Listening to Richard's instructions, Daniel nodded silently, while Richard turned around and went to the restaurant downstairs after he finished speaking. The restaurant is on the fifth floor, neither big nor small, the dishes are average, and the taste is nothing at all, at least in Richard's view. A dish without chili, like a body without a soul, is really uninteresting. After sitting in the restaurant for ten minutes, May Parker came to the restaurant under the leadership of Daniel. Although May Parker is old, her body is still strong. Judging from her upright facial features, she was also a beauty when she was young. When Daniel took May Parker and sat opposite Richard, a hint of doubt flashed in May Parker's eyes. You are, hearing this, a smile appeared on Richard's face, and he pretended to be a child again. Hello Aunt May, I'm Peter's friend. I heard that Peter was in a bad mood recently, so I came to see him specially. Sure enough, when Richard mentioned Peter, May Parker's attention was quickly diverted, no longer entangled in the identity of Richard's child, and a look of sadness appeared on his face. Peter, there's something wrong with this kid. He's been shutting himself up in his room for a long time, so he doesn't listen to anyone or anything, and he doesn't even listen to him. I wanted to take him to the hospital, but he never went. As she spoke, May Parker showed a trace of sadness on her face, and her cloudy eyes quickly filled with tears. Richard watched this scene, but the expression on his face did not change much. His heart was very small, he could only care about his family and the people he cared about, and could not accommodate too many candidates. So the sadness shown in May Parker was not enough to move Richard at all. However, Richard did not interrupt May Parker, but listened to her ramble quietly. After a full ten minutes of chattering, May Parker's mood gradually stabilized, and the expression on her face became somewhat relieved. Obviously, Peter's performance during this time has put May Parker under too much pressure, but no one has spoken, and it has been pressing in his heart. So I just said it all at once. Although it didn't have any effect, it made her feel much better. After speaking, May Parker remembered Richard who was sitting opposite him, an embarrassed smile appeared on his face, and he asked, I'm sorry, I asked you to listen to my old woman for so long, I don't know. What do you have to do with this old woman? Hearing this, Richard shook his head, indicating that he didn't care, and then said, Aunt May, do you know why Peter suddenly became like this? After speaking, without waiting for May Parker to speak, Richard asked himself, because he is the Spider-Man rumored on the internet. As soon as he said this, the embarrassed smile on May Parker's face disappeared, replaced by a look of extreme surprise. Her lips twitched slightly, just about to say something, but Richard didn't give her a chance to speak. I know this surprises you, but everything I say is true, Peter is Spider-Man. Presumably you should know about Spider-Man, and you should also know about the turmoil on the internet some time ago. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.